Yo, what is going on, guys? We are back with another episode of Mogcast. Episode number 44. We are here with the beloved Christian Guzman. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me, man. I feel Thank like you, this, is, uh, this is a long time coming, almost. It ha- we've been talking about it for ages. Right? Yeah. Almost a whole year since Outland opened. Man's busy. And, for, and first of all, I do want to say thank you for um, being so hospitable with, with us in the gym. It means a lot. Like, we're shooting, we're, you know, competitors, Young LA, Al Fleet, same, like, course, same difference. Man, of course. And we're over there shooting, causing a, causing a scene. Man, I, I want to tell, well, later in the, in the podcast, we'll touch on the uh, the first things I heard about you guys, uh, of, of Sush specifically, coming to Al Fleet Gym. Like, you know, I never knew, I didn't know you. Oh, right? no, I know this story, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk, well, you, we'll get into it right now, bro. Get, it, get into yeah, it right get now. Get it out, get okay, it so out. The very first thing I ever heard of Sush was uh, from my gym manager at the time. She goes, hey, there's this guy coming at this, you know, sitting in my office, just uh, pretty much saying, like, he, he's a reason for, like, an athlete successful, blah, blah, He's, like, talking, and she's all, like, you know, all pissed off, man. I'm, like, hey, you know, he's fucking probably joking. You know, he's chill, you know, like, whatever. Like, she was, like, dead set and, like, canceling you and he canceled his membership. I'm, like, I think we know who he's talking chill, about. Chill. I know, I know. <laughs> I actually saw her the other day, and uh, maybe, like, last week it, or a couple of weeks ago it was Summer Shredding. And I saw her, and I was, like, oh, hey, like, how are you? And she was, like, she good. Probably, no, she was she was very friendly. She like, was very fuck friendly. You. you didn't start Alpha Lee. I honestly, fuck th- you. I honestly thought it was gonna be like very like she was gonna be like fuck this kid, but she was actually she very was, friendly. She, she was trying, but I was like, no, no, no you just wait. Speak. speak. I just actually, make sure you're like right up yeah, to yeah, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. I actually you can you can bend it so it's like closer to your mouth, no homo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, right. So I actually had a there was a video that I did, and when it was all going down, and like I had this whole meeting, and like I was sitting in the office. Yeah, she was saying like it was escalating because it was you know things were going live at, or on YouTube and shit like yeah. that. I was like, I nah, don't worry about it. You know, mm-hmm. Just stay chill. I remember that, and that was the old Alphalie gym. Yeah, yeah. And you started from what I've heard, like you oh. didn't follow anyone and shit like that. You kind of just like started, you know, jumped into the fitness yeah. scene, right? Mm-hmm. And he got me into it, which is what I wanted to get into. Is I don't know if you know this. The only reason why I'm here is because he was like, yo. Uh, let's go to Houston. There's this this Alfland coming, and that was two and a half years. You blue balled the fuck. You should blue balled the fuck. Should, should, yeah, it took a little bit. Yeah, it took a little longer than you than what we it thought. It worked though. It was convincing enough. He was like, there was an there's a big fucking gym. It's gonna be sick as hell. Let's go to let's go to Houston right now. There's like Alphalete, and then soon there will be Alfland, and that's the reason. Yeah. That was like what sold me. I was and like, how'd you guys know each other? Like, it was just one? like DMs. He got he got sponsored by Gorilla, and. I'm like, Sush, bro, that can't be his real fucking name. Yeah, yeah. So I watched like a little bit of his. I kind of went into it thinking, like, when I first saw his Instagram, I'm like, oh, he's probably like a Ziz fucking disciple. 100%. Like, douchebag. But then I watched his TikToks and I'm like, oh, no, he's just fucking around. I don't think, honestly, I don't think a lot of people have heard this story because we only told it probably like a year ago, but we have so many new followers since then. So. Yeah, he got sponsored by Gorilla. I'm like, oh, this guy's a dick. But then I watched his TikToks, and I'm like, oh, he's pretty funny. Let's see what his YouTube's about. And he was more toned down on YouTube because it's more long form. So I'm like, all right, this guy's got it. Like, he's... The funny thing with you, with you bro, is, like, I kind of got the same first impression, right? It's just mm-hmm. like, oh, you know, what, like, whatever around. I was hearing and shit. Yeah. But I actually heard you talking to a subscriber of yours at Alpha Elite Gym. And you were giving him French toast advice, bro. You were you, you were give, you were going into depth, like you know, you want to put it in the fucking in, in, the, in the in the in the fucking flip it after exactly thirty yeah, seconds. Yeah, and, and, and I was like, I was just kind of listening. I was filming right next to you, and uh, just I guess like the the detail you gave, and it sold you. You were like, this kid, this fucking kid. It's not. It's just. It's that's the real. You know what I mean? And yeah. people people value that shit, man. And so that that's my first real impression. I don't even. I probably didn't say hi forever. You know, no, but, yeah, but, but it's so. like, that was like, this is chill as fuck. But he knows. You know? and, and with you, but, bro, yeah, it, it, took us, it took us a while too. Like you're lifting the gym for all this weight and shit. Like, you know, <laughs> and it took a bit just kind of like, go say what's up. And yeah, you know, I, I don't know why I probably wasn't around, but it was, yeah, I really just appreciate you guys like, you know, supporting that facility and shit like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, funnily enough, <laughs> I had visited the first time I ever heard of Alpha Lee Gym. I was doing a Gymshark meetup in Houston in 2019. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had a pop-up shop, and then we were all like, let's go to Alpha Lee Gym. And Mickey and Bradley, right? At, at B-Fit? That was kind of like the... Bradley no, Marvel this was now? after then. This was 2019. So okay. um, we, I did like one of my biggest videos there. It was like a big-ass bench PR in Alpha Lee, and all like a bunch of the people that were training, they were all crowded around. It was super fucking hype. So that gave me a good impression of the gym. And then, so anyway, I met Sush through Gorilla, watched his TikTok, watched his YouTube, and just reached out to him with a DM. Eric, I'll throw the DM on the screen right here. 
And I was basically just like, bro, I don't know what your plans are, but you've got a lot of potential. Keep going. And he was like, thank you, man. Appreciate it. And then we just started texting. We started FaceTiming. And he was like, not way different, but like significantly more chill over FaceTime, more like more relatable instead of just being so in your face. And I'm like, all right, so this guy's cool. And he's like texting me, yo, I fucking hate chemistry. I'm doing my chemistry homework right now. I don't know what I want to do. And I'm like, bro, drop out. I got to try to find those texts. <laughs> yeah, those no, are iconic somewhere, texts, somewhere. but Anytime I'd have to scroll out. up. But I was like, dude, honestly, I wouldn't say this to everyone, but I think you should drop out. And I think you should try to pursue this. Like you're getting, he was getting 7,000 likes on average per picture with 13,000 followers. God damn. So it was about 60% engaged, just like crazy engagement. I could tell he had a cult and I'm like, dude, you could go really far. Still had no plans of ever like meeting him or anything like that. I was like, yo, if I'm ever in like Georgia area, maybe we could get a lift in. But that was as far as it went. Long story short, it didn't take much convincing to drop for him to drop out. And he was like, yo, my parents are kicking me out of the house. They're like, if you're not going to school, then we're not supporting you. You got to move out. You got two weeks. What do I do, James? And I'm like, honestly, bro, I don't really want to live with my parents anymore. Do you want to like, bro? Yeah. Do you yeah, want to move Houston. in? And he you, was split between you mind Houston. Moving that to your left? Yeah, perfect. Thanks. He was split between Houston and Chicago, where he was born and raised. And I'm like, bro, I promise you there's nothing going on in Chicago. Houston's the place to be. You got Alpha Lee Jim, you got Alpha Land coming. And we actually got on a three way call, me, more place, more dates, Derek, and Sush. And we were like, bro, go to Houston. Let's move in together. We'll get a fucking Airbnb and we'll wing it and we'll make it work. And then we went now to Houston. Was driving fucking and Lambos and shit, <laughs> man. Jesus and Christ. And then it was history from there. And, yeah. and the, the funny thing is, is because you're right. Like, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know you. I didn't know of, you know, any of the, like, the OG, founding, the founding whatever. fathers yeah, of this yeah. shit. And so I'm like, I, we go to Alfleet and he's like, yeah, like the, the, the Christian Guzman, the guy, he owns this gym. And I was like, okay, sick. And I remember seeing you probably like the first time I saw you. And I, I don't know who someone pointed it out. He was like, yo, that's Christian Guzman. Like the guy who owns this gym. I'm like looking, I'm like, who the fuck is this like old yeah, fucking the, guy? Like, yeah, I was like, right, I, whatever, like I was like, who the fuck die. is this guy? Like, whatever. So that's why we never really like connected until I actually knew. I probably, I don't know the first time, but it was probably through Harry. Like, I'm going to guess it was probably through Harry that like the first time we really like talked and stuff. And then I realized you're a chill ass guy. And then you gave us the, the, you gave us Alpha Land. Yeah. And you gave us like the VIP, the area. You treated us like athletes of your own. Still working on the speed bumps going away, bro. They're reducing. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I promise. I told you, you that shit is too bro, high, bro. Time's ticking, man. I know. It's shit. like three inches off the ground, the speed bumps at Alpha it is Land. way too much, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm still. <laughs> we don't all have a Raptor like you, so I can't like go over them, you know? Man, that, that's crazy. I, I had no idea. And you, did you serve? You, uh, no, I didn't. No, I'm not. I was never in the military. I it saw was just, photos, yeah. I was like, what? It was just like the military school. So we actually talked about it before. I'm like no stolen valor so i was in a military school and then i um when when the pa uh pandemic hit i they sent us home and i was like why the fuck am i even enrolled here and that's when i like figured out dropping out and stuff like that damn that's crazy. wait so so you went for military school and then you went to like a regular college mm -hmm. well, what for were you like majoring again? i know you it told was, me it was times, it was uh kinesiology science? yeah okay yeah. exercise science kinesiology Same. i was kinesi i was kinesiology at first and i switched to uh i was a tcu for one year and then i moved to texas state to do health and fitness management, they called it. Uh -huh. Pretty much, I figured that was like I want to build a gym, right? So health and how do you manage a, a, a little bit, a little business, so you, a little bit of that, and then I just dropped out after you. You, year. you had plans of building a gym all the way ever since I started training when I was fourteen, uh, or fifteen, going into high school freshman year. Like right when that freshman year started, there was a, a training camp down the street from Dallas High School called OSP. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they had a three o'clock class. So you've always been local. Oh yeah, bro. I lived in the same, literally the same street, like like my whole life. Damn, but, but Mr. Houston over here. I'm only down with it because I traveled so much, though, man. Since in the last twelve years, it's like I've seen a lot of places and shit, and I love Sugar Land. How long have you been doing this? I started at 19, so 2012. I just passed a decade. So when you started, wow. what was what was starting for you? Was that YouTube or well, YouTube. like what was YouTube? It was YouTube, and it was uh, pretty much back then. You had you know maybe five to six fitness YouTubers. Yeah. So what would take you to workouts and shit? And like, right. you know, I would watch those videos kind of, you know, hear these tips and shit and go try the workouts and just rewatch the videos to really like understand, you know, why does when you fucking go close grip, why does that work more of the outer, uh -huh. you know, just like little tips like that, that you couldn't find on simply or you couldn't find, you know, just from whatever, like whatever you kind of hear. And like these people are like really explaining in depth and I'm a visual person. So I spent a shit ton of time just watching videos. Uh -huh. And from there, I was like, man, I feel like, you know, I kind of became the guy in my high school that had a more knowledge of, you know, 
nutrition and kind of like those training tips and shit. You, you so became gym guy. The, the, same, the gym yeah. browsing bagels every 45 minutes. Dude, right, literally right, same. So, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally same. And, and then it went first year of college, you know, I went to TCU. Super fraternity, sorority school. And I, I didn't join or anything like that. So it was like I was the minority. Fucking 7% of people are not involved in sports or in a free life or anything yeah. like that. And so I was like, man, fuck. I guess I'm going to fucking just go to the gym and make yeah. some videos. Like, let me start filming. And I uh, started there. So what did... So fitness YouTube back then was more like informative than vlog style, right? Straight up informative. Uh huh. No. So vlogs. is that until is Matt that August. what you got into? Matt Ogus, really? Matt Ogus. Matt Ogus and Chris Jones. Yeah, I remember Chris Jones, bro. What his partner's name? Vince G. Yeah, Vince yeah. G. They had oh, physiques the fuck? of greatness, man. Physiques of greatness, yeah, yeah. bro. That's like crazy nostalgia. I'm. T- I was like 15 when I heard that shit, uh, bro. That shit, like. And those were the first two personalities. It, Chris Jones was much more like out there and sort of like, you know, almost like a, a showman, right? Yeah. Matt Ogus was super chill, but, but he was shredded as fuck, bro. This guy Always. Was like counting his, I was like, you count your carbs and I thought you should fucking do the meal plan. Like he was kind of bro breaking counts down. counts his fucking alcohol when he goes out to drink. Exactly. But it, it's interesting to see like, oh, there's his girlfriend. Like, what are they doing? There's her dog and shit. Like, and just sort of seeing that personal, oh, he's talking about a show he's watching on Netflix. I'm like, you don't think you give a shit until you're like, oh, wait. I like that show after I checked it out. Like, Mm -hmm. you kind of, like, build a connection with them. Right. So, you know, meeting those two guys, like, man, I I literally thought I was fucking starstruck, man. Yeah. I couldn't say a word. I'm like, holy holy shit. It's crazy because, like, the new new era, the new generation of, like, you know, gym guys coming up, whether it's they're just working out not on social media or if they're making content, a lot of them don't really know Matt Ogus, or if they do, they just think he's another fitness influencer. And they see the engagement – and they're like, oh, he's got decent engagement, like whatever, just another guy. And it's funny that they have no idea that he like is the father. reason the that father. fitness is where it is yeah. today in terms of the type of content created um, and the way people demonstrate it. Because it used to just be like straight up informative. Do you remember Six Pack Shortcuts? Bro, yeah, Mike I, Chang, I was bro. never, yeah, I couldn't stand the guy. <laughs> couldn't stand him. He, yeah, but back really when really I was good. 14, bro, I was like, yo, I got to do the push-ups with the fucking towels under my hands and yeah, get, like, yeah. the stretch. And I guess, like, that general, like, 3DMJ, Alberto Nunez, like, yeah. that was sort of the first group. Shout of, out Alberto Nunez. Bro, he was my coach, but he's a fucking amazing, he's competing in, like, eight weeks or something. He looks fucking sick. Lifetime Natty. Lifetime well. Natty, insanely knowledgeable. Yeah. And uh, that 3DMJ, like, team, which Matt Ogus was under 3DMJ, like, that's where I've sort of founded my own, like, just, like, under really truly understood the fundamentals of macros, like, fit and just, like, actual proper dieting that mm-hmm. wasn't just the bullshit, like, you know, don't eat carbs before bed and shit like that. Why'd you first get into the gym? Uh, I was skinny as fuck, and my friend who uh, I, I was in a band in high school, I played guitar and shit. Band so, kid? A band, like a rock band. Yeah, was, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. The Mondays, dope. bro. <laughs> that was oh, called the Mondays. The Mondays. Yeah, yeah. How'd and, you come up with that name? Uh, you need a reason to look forward to the Mondays, you know? So, oh, yeah, that's it was, pretty good. Speak yeah. closer. Speak yeah, there you go. Yeah. There. So uh, so he was like two years older than me, and we would play football with the, you know, just like kind of hang out, do band practice, whatever. Shredded, bro. Six pack. Like symmetrical, just like good ass genetics. The yeah. girls loved him. And I was like this like new, younger, like, you know, rhythm guitar player. He's a fucking lead guitar player, had a six pack and shit. I'm like, what do you do? What do you do for workout? And he did that OSP class Monday, Wednesday, pro Friday. hormones. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, sign me up fucking first day of school. I'm signed up Monday, three o'clock, ready to get big. I just wanted to get girls to me. I was so shy. And yeah. shit, so I just wanted, yeah. Muscle to be honest. Yeah. That's it. And then how long did it take you from first stepping in the gym to making your first YouTube video? That would be five years. First year college. Years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So exactly all high school is just like kind of building up knowledge and shit. And first right. year college is when I started. Okay. Why'd you start? Like, what made you start? Uh, honestly, just I saw everybody doing their thing on YouTube, and I thought I had a good amount of tips built up because I'd watch everybody's and kind of, like, a- accumulate that from that guy, this from that guy, and kind of combine it. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, honestly, like, just that, and I was putting physique updates and shit, like, just kind of more so, like, documenting my shit because I was a 19-year-old Christian Guzman physique update, like, shit like that, and just, like, trip to the supplement store and kind of sharing what I was kind of accumulating. So when you first started YouTube, did you have any sort of platform besides that? Or were you, zero. you were start so you started from zero on YouTube. I had YouTube before Instagram. <laughs> I was going to ask that because yeah. Instagram back in 2012, that was like fucking empty. I was taking photos of my dog. You're supposed to, you know, my, my dog. Right, yeah, right. Instagram and shit. So that definitely came after YouTube. Okay. So, huh. 
So Crazy. when when you first started YouTube, what type of content were you creating? Were you doing was this before the the Matt Ogus era? This was no Matt Ogus is already a thing. Chris okay. Jones is already a thing. Greg Plitt, that's another one I have to right. give a shout out to. He was already a thing as well. So like kind of seeing all of them do it, right? You know, I wanted to start with the tips and shit, but as I kind of like I guess your personality naturally starts showing through. Right. And like I wasn't charismatic like Chris Jones. I wasn't, you know, sm- I wasn't shredded as fuck like Matt Ogus, but I guess I was People said, you know, they like the chillness of it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And with that, it kind of just, yeah, I mean, bro, like once I started making videos, they were probably right off the bat, you know, 500 to 1,000 views. And I was like, holy shit, 1,000 views. Damn. You know? Well, and it's probably because it was so desaturated back then. There was only like a handful of people that knew what to do or decided to make YouTube it videos. Is, uh, it was, that it's like, if you look up chess workout, there's a decent chance that your video is going to pop up just because there wasn't that much shit out there. 100%. And back then, wasn't like YouTube paying? Like, yeah, they were fucking paying? Yeah. Uh, more like 2015, 2016, 2017, that's when they were paying. Yeah. That's like, how much paying. are we talking a month? Like 25, 30 a month. With, with how many views per video, would you say? On average, 2016, I was getting at least 200K a video. And how many every times video. were you uploading? Like every second or third day. Okay. okay. Well, well, I mean, that's, that's pretty, pretty fair. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. pretty fair. Yeah. And it was good. I, I never really, like, banked on YouTube revenue much. Yeah. Because I didn't really understand how it worked. It's like one viral video that, like, literally changed my channel forever with, like, revenue purposes, right? But as far as, is that better? Yeah, yeah. But as far as, like, revenue, it really started with me with second year of college, I started meal plans, right? So I was uh-huh. just, like, for free answering emails and shit with people had questions. And uh, from there, my dad was like, and you're spending so much time answering those fucking emails. You're not paying attention in school no more. You know, why don't you just charge for it? You know? And so he told me to get this app, you know, the Square app. Where you like Wait, what up. do you mean charge for it? Were you not charging before? Oh, no. Bro. I, would, I would just like get on my email and answer, you know, like do shit. And, yeah. You know, clear the inbox. Damn. For a long time. And while in class and shit, just like <laughs> completely not taking any notes and shit. Because I, I, felt, I felt like at the time I was already making videos. And I kind of saw like, this is what I want to do. But why am I in fucking political science god damn it like you know like yeah. i felt like i was wasting my time uh still like you know was passing and shit like that but i started that business just with you know instead of the free emails i'd say hey i would here's a like a little bit of answer to your question if you want mm-hmm. more information you know this is what you got to do give me a call we'll run your credit card we'll get you a custom meal plan need 72 hours and we'll go over any questions you got Boom. and that was the beginning of all of it and then you started making decent money from that and you were kind of looking at like well, I'm making good money from this. There's proof of concept. Or I can keep listening to fucking political science and why we shouldn't go to war. So there, there was like six, a six-month time frame where I started with a meal plan workout. That was like 59 bucks uh, for like, you know, either or. Mm-hmm. But then when I came out with the actual coaching, the 90-day training program, where that was 24 access to my phone, guaranteed responses or your, or your money back, just shit like that. Like that was, I was bringing in like, bro. Wait, quick, quick question. Um... How many subscribers were you at on YouTube by the time you launched your coaching? About 10K. Okay. So you were making good money from 10K. Had you started Instagram at this point or? Uh, I was on Instagram, but in, back then, man, Instagram really didn't do anything. Yeah. It was like straight So it was all YouTube. YouTube. All YouTube. And you were making good money just from 10K. You learned how to monetize but, but, it properly. Between 10 and 20K, that's when I, over the course of like six months, I built, a, I, I kept a journal, man. Every single sale I did, I tried. So every single day it'd be like, you know, total sales, total new customers, I draw a line and just like literally keep track because I, that's just like how I knew to do it. Right. But I was bringing in 30, 45 K a month, bro. At 19, <sighs> in college Holy while shit. sitting in the back of my fucking class. You're what, like 1920, 1920. I'm like, this has got to be illegal. Like <laughs> yeah. what the fuck am I doing? And were back you, then, you that's, taxes well, and think shit? about it. That's, bro, yeah. So I had no idea about any, uh, like in, and the IRS came for you. They're like, who the fuck is this kid? N- not, not at that point, but like, at that point I was like, after six months, I took that journal and I, I was like, mom, dad, and he talked to you. Right. Yeah, yeah. But, like, like, I, I had a problem. Yeah, I had yeah, a big problem. Before here. starting out this fall semester, my third year, this is what I've been doing, right? And here's the proof. Because I, I don't believe in, you know, just kind of talking about, you know, I'm just going to quit and finally kind of start out and it's going to work out. You got to have mm. proof. That, it, okay. I, I right there. Hold on. Right there. Let me make a point. That is exactly what I think that a lot of people watching right now need to understand is like there needs to be something showing that you're going to. Like you're going to succeed. Like it's not just going to be, to have proof, it's man. not just going to be like, okay, I'm just going to stop and do this and then it's going to work. And you have to have some type of thing to, to prove to whether it's yourself or your parents or somebody like that, who's going to get you and on yourself, board. man. Just like, not I don't want to say security or anything, but like why, even though I'm enrolled in 15 hours or 18 hours in my semester, like, 
the fuck am I doing the rest of the time? Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's I had a lot of time to to do that part time, and I was yeah. juggling both for a while. And just to add on to what Brandon said, it's even harder to do that now because there's so many people trying to do the same thing. You're saying that back then there wasn't that many people. It's like there was kind of a wide open gap of a big ass demand for fitness content and not a lot of fitness content creators. Now there's a shit ton of fitness content creators. So if you're thinking about dropping out, it's not as easy as, oh, I'll just start coaching and I'll be making 40K a month. It's and also you have to think 40K a month back in 20, 20, was that 2013? 2013, that's like 60K a month now, you know? <laughs> right, that's so fucking like, old, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Inflation's like gone through the Infl- fucking roof, bro. <laughs> no, nah, seriously. But, and, and I, I guess the thing for me was like, you know, the health and fitness management degree that I was chasing, I, I ended up finding out that's a PE teacher, man. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't. Yeah, I can't see how, that's what I wanted to do was like PE teacher and then side, like athletic trainer for the, for the football team. And I was that's mom, what I wanted like, to look, do. Mom, I, mean, bro, I was too dumb for kinesiology, man. I was like, <laughs> I had to go to like, that shit was hard at TCU. And so like immediately I was like, all right, I'm going to go to Texas State, kind of like free up a little bit of time and just like, you know, try to keep doing this YouTube thing. And, uh, yeah. And that's when like, like Jim shark opened up opportunities were opening up for me. And I was like, I want to go travel and like, you know, I want to work out with Matt Ogus and like Jeff side and fucking, I want to go and do that. Right. Yeah. But I couldn't do that in school. So my so mom cried for months you saying trans- making a mistake and shit, all that kind of deal. Cause your parents stuff. are immigrants, right? Uh, my mom's from Mexico. My dad's born in the South. Tech. My dad's like the entrepreneur though. Okay. He's always been kind of like, hey, you know, get that app, the square card and like start charging. My mom's always like, get your fucking degree, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And so it was, uh, it was definitely not like a supportive, you know, from my mom's right. side. And that was, that was huge. Yeah. That's the thing. Well, my mom was an immigrant. She's from Korea. Yeah. And so she, her thing was like, yo, no college degree. Like you're fucked. You're blah, blah, yeah. blah. You know? So I, I can definitely, what if it stops? That. What if it stops exactly. coming in? Like, and exactly. that's just, it, it gets, I mean, that's shit. scary as fuck. Mm-hmm. So you have yeah. to have that proof, you know? And at the end of it, it's just like, you kind of have to, if I fuck up my, I, I'll, I fuck up. I, I can start again. Worst yeah. case, I'll, I'll start up, you know, as soon as I, as soon as, uh, you know, I'm seeing signs of like, it's not going to work out. Mm-hmm. So when did you know that you were like, you were good uh, after like six months of consistent between. So only six years. months. So you're still 19 at the time. You're like, I'm good, bro. Yeah. yeah. You're like this shit's going to just roll like a snow, like snowball and fucking. Yeah. And then if I can hit bro. it hard with more videos, hit it hard with more content and start traveling, collabing and shit like that. And yeah. just like, yeah, that's when everything just like kept. So I, and I moved back home. I, mom was pissed at me. I go, can I come back home? <laughs> just to, just to, as I was yeah, traveling, so I kind of save some money, yeah. like and stay in my room. And man, I'd probably, that's where I built the money to be able to fund my first gym was from coaching. So yeah. I was just at home, just like, and there's no expense, just literally like, you know, your time. That's the only expense. Yeah. That's and funny. I, that's like, it's the exact same thing that happened with me, but I didn't, I was not making 40 K a month when I dropped out it, for me, it was just getting sponsored by Gymshark. And I'm like, yo, I'm only making like two to three K a month, but like there's proof of concept here. Like I just got sponsored by something that. I used to think it was a pipe dream. Bro, Gymshark, I used to, I would order the stringers, take photos, post them on Instagram. And that, and Tag do, Gym do, Shark. Do, bro, if you look up Christian Guzman, Gymshark unboxing, there's some cheesy ass edits with me opening Gymshark <laughs> pack. And that was before sponsorship. Yeah. That's I, and, and that's what people, they were getting tagged and getting posted on the website and shit. And uh, so like from getting noticed on Instagram, you know, that's where that sponsorship happened. And, you know, kind of put keeping the work ethic, you know, doing as many shoots as I could for them, providing content every single time they needed anything like that. I was on the website. I was on the fucking banners. I, it, it became a, you know, that's how the momentum kind of really, it, it, I don't want to say like a company can build you or whatever, like that definitely getting to that circle, like opened up a, so many bigger, opportunities, so many connections and shit. And you just start learning. So like how immediately how, when you're in there, you just start learning, you start learning. How long were you with them before you decided to branch off and do your own thing? So I, I had plans of Alfleet for years. And I was and the owners are super chill, bro. Still some of my best friends, like Ben, Lewis, Dan yeah. Crane, like some of those original like people that were in that crew. Noel, like Noel yeah. filmed my video with Steve Cook, and we did a Steve Cook Chris Hughes on athlete video. So what the fuck? I'm gonna yeah. be in the same video as Steve Cook, right? And and so like those connections like are still always in, and I was very open. They were supportive of it too. And it wasn't really until two and two years in, two and a half years in, to where it was kind of like I was posting Alfleet and kind of like you know publicly like working on that and everything while still doing Gymshark, no problems with it. But I, I guess like them expanding the company, bringing new people in, kind of tightening up the screws, you know that kind of deal. They put a new contract in front of me, this new guy that had no idea who he fucking was, and I was like, I can't sign that. You know, what yeah. I mean? it was just a different dynamic, and that's when we just split ways. But yeah. I have nothing bad to say about the company, man. They're fucking. Killing it with what they're doing. That's kind of funny. That's how it was with Vicel. 
I was with Jim Shark and Vical. They were at first they were cool with Vical, but then once we got the stringers delivered, they were like, I don't know about that, and they wanted me to basically just not go through with it. And I'm like, I'll hold off for now. But then luckily they fired me a few months later. So then I'm like, all right, well I got nothing standing in front of me now. Yeah. But yeah, at first they were cool with it. Yeah. So with your with your like YouTube content and because I know your videos now are like because I've seen I've watched some of your old videos, Joe. LT puts them on sometimes and, and your old videos, they're so much different than how they are now. Because I mean, cause YouTube's evolving, yeah, yeah. you know? And so how, how has like, how has your dynamic or like your mindset on YouTube changed? Because it, because it, it like it's, it's inevitable. You have to evolve to, to continue to be popping. And, and if you look at like the OG people, it's like other than Max tuning myself, like, there ain't many around. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Is that it, you've it, done a really good job of being relevant. That's only if you adapt. If you if you're not willing to like see what like if you're not willing to accept like you know whatever like videos are a new thing on Instagram whatever that may be like you're and, and for me that was really realizing man those fucking like boring ass like how many grams of creatine do you need to take what supplement like you can only cover that shit so many times unless you're Jeff mm-hmm. Emperor and do it fucking way better right <laughs> but but like you can only do that so many times and so for me it was like the vlogs you know getting more creative with like titles and almost having a theme before I start filming like you know getting my the the girlfriends more involved and kind of becoming more of like kind of trying to take those elements that a lot, a lot of those huge family vlogging channels were like doing and captivating the Casey Neistat's and shit that were almost like the clickbait. Right. Yeah. And kind of taking that to be able to, to level up the shit, man. It's, it's like, I wanted my thumbnails to look better, to be framed, to be thought about, like to just to keep up. Right. And, and I think constantly having like each thumbnail I try to do, I have to tell myself it's the best one I've done. Right. I want to make it that just to like really show like I'm putting effort and thought into it. And I'll spend three hours on a fucking title and thumbnail, man. I swear to God, even now. That's insane, dude. I swear. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, like, I just, this morning, I posted a video, and I was like, ah, what the fuck do I title this, bro? And, like, these guys were just throwing ideas out there, and I was like, okay, I'm just, fuck it, I'm doing this. Like, and then 30 minutes in, I'll go change it. I'll be like, oh, fuck, it's not really, you know, it's not, it's not doing what, I, and it, you know, the glory, though, of that is that some people just have it, man. Some people have that connection. Some people have a connection that's very, very strong. That like you, if I could post a black screen with no thumbnail picture and fucking call it vlog twenty nine, I goddamn would. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but like, and and if you can, that's more power to you, bro. Like fucking, t- you know, take advantage. But I would always say like, try to find how can you level that up. Yeah, what man. are the number one like fucking viral people doing? What words are they using? Is it like a you know, if you put text on a thumbnail, it needs a compliment you know, what you read first, then you see that t- it needs to like kind of trigger like what's Logan Paul doing? What, what are his thumbnails? Like? Yeah. You know it's I mean? funny that with, with Casey Neistat, since you brought him up, he kind of didn't do that. There were some videos, but remember he did daily vlogs for like two years, mm-hmm. which he edited himself by the way, which was fucking nuts. Um, a lot of his daily vlogs were not really clickbaity and they were just like, but he chose the best part of the video or the highlight of the video. Yeah. The highlight and of the moment like, and he feature it. He, in the thumbnail or the title would be like, I lost everything. Exactly. And it's like, oh, he lost his drone in a tree or something. Exactly. <laughs> you know? And, but they would be such like a simple, all his thumbnails would always be just a screenshot from the video yep. with like no editing. And every daily vlog, I can only imagine how much money he was making from oh. YouTube because that was before the adpocalypse. So he was getting like, two, three million views per vid every single day. Yeah. Bro must have been making it, bank, insane. bro. And like that for him, that period of time where he put that work in, that that really truly set up his career for in open doors for the rest of his life. Yeah. Have you seen the Casey and Isaac video? It's called something about time management, how I manage my time. And he has an overhead shot and he kind of time blocks each hour and he he puts little uh, like puzzle pieces into like, here's what I'm doing from 4 a.m. to 5 a.m., 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. And he kind of goes through and they're each color coded like work, family time, vlog, editing, blah, blah, blah. Oh, man. And he goes through it. Yeah. And I remember watching it and I'm like, all right, wh- when does he get to the sleep part? Yeah. And then it ends up being like 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. I sleep. And I'm like, bro, how the fuck are you alive? Like, what do you how how do you function? He's always so awake in his videos. I think everyone if, like someone like Casey, right? I think there's going to be a time frame where you in your life where you have the opportunity to exert at a fucking different capacity and it's mm-hmm. not sustainable forever at all. Mm-hmm. For me, like I, I like to think it was that flame. It was that build process, man. It was yeah. like, that was the fucking time for me where like, I will never fucking put myself through that again. Like period. Like it was just completely unhealthy. Not like I felt like shit. I'd crash for the three, four full week, you know, days 
in a row, not knowing yeah. what it was. Wake up disoriented. So when shit. when did Alpha Land construction start? Like when did you? February, when would you say the start date was? February twenty twenty. So it took 27, 24 to twenty six months to like open up. Mm-hmm. I thought it'd take seven. Yeah, yeah, because we were all like, "Yo, where the yeah. fuck's this gym at, Christian?" Like <laughs> so I, in my opening video where I, t- I hyped it up, I put a at the very end. I put a countdown. It was like a six month countdown. And she like, and I was like, oh fuck, that's so. Off. That's where everybody got that, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's fucking bullshit, what bro. Was, I was like, I was counting on you. I was like, yo, it's gonna be so sick. So like, all so these people here. When you moved, like you had this lot basically of space. Was there any building on the lot yet? Like, did you have to construct from the ground up or what? So, bro, the the move from Alfleet. How many acres is it? Eighteen and a half acres. It's fucking yeah. huge. It's fucking. Because you have all that the the parking the We're grass only parking lot right like now. Thirty percent of the property up right now. <laughs> So like, and there's plans for every square inch of that fucking lot, like like which is so exciting. Yeah, but like that was not the original plan. Like actually, there was about a year and a half where I was trying to find the new Alfleet gym from the Seven Eleven Avenue E. I was trying to put Alfleet and like our operate our clothing brand and shit and the gym in the same building and have like a two story be able to you know have offices up you know upstairs and like see the gym down there. Uh huh. And uh, pretty much a lot of the building there's two buildings that I spent a lot of time on like six months negotiating. And uh, they were already, like, built. They were fucking beautiful. They were perfect. Off the Highway 59. Um, kind of like where the Crunch Fit in it. Like, that whole area. And, like, really opening up those Here in, in Sugar In Sugar Land? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And they ended up just, like, falling through after all this time, bro, I spent. And it was, like, I was just, I was fucking gas. I was, like, man, this shit's, it, it's just you completely restart. And or the seller decides, you know what? I'm not going to sell it. Never mind. Even though you offer mm. full price and shit. Yeah. But then uh, my landlord at the time came up. He came to my office. Hey, hey bro, I have a fucking weird-ass proposal. I have like a weird property that came up. It's 18 and a half acres, which I was looking for like a single building, like 60,000 square feet. Right. So 18, just the, the amount of work and money it takes to maintain 18 and a half acres. It's a fucking nightmare. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to go see that shit. Why, like, it, that's just excessive. And, uh, Heidi convinced me. She's like, just fucking, I was like down, but I was like literally in my office fucking laying on the ground. Like, oh, fuck this man. Like, I'm just, I need a break before I go reset, you know, restart, like looking for shit. And, uh, she's so positive all the time. She's just, she convinced me, let's go check it out. Why not? Let's go drive by. So we set an appointment, and as soon as I walked the place, bro, I could fucking see it. It was like, this is it. Yeah. This is this is where we can do something different, right? And uh, it was just room to grow. And the price was the same price as a building I offered for, it was a 40,000 square foot building. Like, in that deal didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Eight and a half million. This one was eight. It was 11 million, got down to eight and a half. Said, so if I can take 18 and a half fucking acres for 8.5 million with buildings on it, and just like the openness that it had, done so all the buildings that exist on alpha land right now were already there correct so your first step you move into this lot and there's some buildings there what what did the interior of these buildings look like at right. first so it was uh just uh, empty as it was fuck a, oh no <laughs> it was so a geophysical yeah. company like uh they used to like dig these had these massive trucks like where gym two is that was a full-on trucking bay like these probably 25 30 foot trucks with like you know six foot, seven foot tall tires and shit. They would dr- drill into the ground. And uh, there was probably 220 offices in the first building. 220 <sighs> offices, bro. Like complete corporate. Like every, and what's crazy is the company went out of business and it was a fucking ghost town. There was people's like cereal and shit and like the whiteboards had all, Whoa, it, like, they, everyone just like disappeared pretty much. And uh, the company went out of business like five years ago. So the property has been on for sale for like four years to that point, five years. And the reason I was able to get the, price so low is because because the bank like took that property you had to buy the whole thing you couldn't like break off a piece and just buy like no one wanted 18 and a half acres mm-hmm. so that's why the price was so good so i had uh-huh. to demo everything out and from there it was just like kind of figuring what i wanted to do with the spot took a long ass time and changing my mind and shit and just like oh i didn't like how that looks like we try something else and like realizing how big of an issue that was with COVID happening mm. and no workers able to come and shit man oh it was a it was it's a fucking nightmare. Because by the time you'd already settled, all right, this is the place. You said February 2020. Yeah, that's the exact time fucking COVID hit. So you're like, all right, finally some room to breathe, bro, and, and then boom, and pandemic. Just the property there, just to put like the pressure. Right, I was trying to get it done in seven months. Yeah, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a month just to have the building. That's with like property tax. That's with like the, just the space of that. What shit. was the total price of it? So the, the eight and a half million for the, to buy it. Okay. But just with property, just like literally like the land, mm-hmm. right? Electric, just to keep the basic functions there. Not with any like demo taxes and shit and 120 a month. Okay. And, and so for me, I was like, I can afford seven months, you know, mm-hmm. of, you know, going in and then I add, let's say like two, three mil to kind of 
you know, to spruce it up and get new equipment and do all the shit. I ended up spending $20 million. <laughs> and I only asked for $1 million from the bank. So they finance, they finance the building, so eight and a half. I put yeah. two million down for that. And I asked for one million. So nine and a half was the total of the bank finance. Uh-huh. I paid two out of pocket. And everything past that nine and a half to twenty out of my fucking pocket. Oh my god. So did you have that laying around or you had to like you had an asset? It was, it was like, like new new no alpha drop all, every fucking day. It's not all bro, liquid. We gotta right? drop more it shit. Liquid. It was all liquid. So you just Jesus, had this, bro. I had I had it, but bro, that what that <laughs> Wait, so you were like you weren't investing in it or nothing? It was just there. The thing with like I was using it wasn't just like money put away, right? It's like every alpha, every launch that we had, it was full active. But keep in mind, I'm also paying for full product of alpha a year half, a right, year right. out, right? And so that stress of like getting far enough ahead and shit with alpha elite, with mm-hmm. COVID happening, and also with like, fuck, it's not just 120 a month. It's like it's going to cost me how it, 300 thousand for the fucking parking lot. Are you kidding? Yeah. Me? Wait, and, wait, 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 what do you mean 300 that? Oh, just to get it done? Well, that's just an example. But yeah, yeah. Bro, painting the buildings white was 125K just on the exteriors. <sighs> Demoing was like 500. I mean, bro, I can, give you a, I can give you a number for any. The signage, I spent like 135. And then the, just the flooring and outfits, bro, that shit's like, I mean, every single thing was like, I have a number for. <laughs> it's like a, it's a very like dark, stressful time, but it's, I just had to keep working. I just yeah. couldn't stop working. I was already in it, bro. Yeah, I was, was going to say, once, in once you're already it. in it, like, you, you have no choice then. Also, that's, that's so, it's so up. much hype where, like, you were like, I can't give up, you know? Like, you have to do it because so many people are counting on you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you've exactly. already bro, bought the lot. go you out know? of business, you know? It's mm-hmm. like, I, I don't know what the fuck I do. It's like, so, yeah, I was already in it, and it's like, well, fucking, I bit it off already. I got to keep it. You just got to keep going. So, the you said Gym 1 was all office space. It's kind of a hard question, but, like, what was the demolition process for that? Like, would you could just get fucking bulldozers in there and just, psh, uh, like, how'd you, how'd you demolish that and turn it into this big open space? The you demo know? is pretty easy, to be honest. The, the demo is, like, the easiest part, I would say. Um, and, yeah, it's literally just companies going in. Like, literally, like, there's videos of me and Max, Heidi, fucking taking hammers. We, we, we wouldn't want to do it because you want to be careful with what you're fucking hitting and all that kind of shit. But I, I had a company, a GC, do the demo. And uh, there's so many change orders and shit just for basic stuff like, you know, oh, can we actually like not do that wall? But it was a change order to the plan. So they had to like bill me whatever. So it was just um, I, I knew nothing about construction, how any of that shit worked. Right. Like zero. And so that was my first experience kind of like under self. I spent 500 grand on just demo. I was only budgeting two or three for the whole thing. Right. So and, I heard I just to cut you off. I heard one thing. It was October of the, the October that we came here. So 2020. Mm hmm. And I heard that um, there was a, like a fire marshal, and he had came like you had oh, yeah, you had done something, and then the fire marshal was like, "Yo, that's not allowed," and you had to just like restart. Or the permits that that's what took the longest. But I will, even if the permits would have flown by and been smooth, like I didn't, we didn't have everything in line. Even if COVID didn't happen, it's like I I still would have taken just the same amount of time to fucking get all this shit done to plan all like the the desks and the, I mean every bro, the whole retail. So that was all hand designed. So it, it, but they, it wasn't designed before I bought the building. It's like I didn't have a floor plan when I bought the building. Mm-hmm. And usually you have full plan. You have you know what the you know the plan is before going into it. I kind of did the opposite. I was like, I'll fucking buy it. Now I got to fucking really figure this shit out. Like, what do I need in five years? I, I, that's why upstairs is kind of like fucking huge. I had no idea how big yeah. the normal office was. Why is yeah. my restroom fucking 20 feet big? I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. I was really just like kind of pulling it out of my ass. Are man. you using all of upstairs, like the second floor of gym one? Yep. And we're about to redo the entire office space upstairs starting next month. It's fucking huge though. Cause when I'm up there, I'm like, cause you know, I'm, I'm curious and shit and you gave me the pass. So I'm like walking up there, just looking around, like peeking my head and shit and you know, getting nosy. And I see it's just a lot of fucking room. Like you have a big yeah. building up there. It is. And now it's just a matter of like, we almost have no small, we don't have enough small offices. So everything's big collaborative mm-hmm. rooms. So like, yeah, I saw that when, when you took me through upstairs, it's, it's like, rooms. is our fucking R and D, whatever the fuck. And it's just like a gigantic room. And I'm like, yo, where are your offices at? There's no, office. <laughs> <laughs> like literally I think we had like six offices upstairs and they were yeah. fucking massive. So now it's like, I'm adding 14 offices just in like the space. We're kind of just like kind of tightening up, you know, what we need to do. Existing space. And you have yeah. a, like an Aka has yeah. a little spot in there and then sour ships as well. Yep. So there's also like little, like, you know, their own little thing. And I committed to that right away. I was like, you know, I, you know come on, guys. Yeah. yeah. It turns out. And now wish, you're like, you need it back. Yeah. Y'all want a sauna? I could do it where we're showing yeah. you that. Kick you know, them but. out. Kick, in, <laughs> kick them out. <laughs> but it's like, you know, once you commit, it's, it's, you know, that'll run its course eventually. And of course, yeah. like, I don't expect anyone to, 
even my best friend, like, you know, whenever you're ready to move on, this is just a stepping stone, bro. Like, you know, and that's how I've always kind of been with my friend. Like, I don't ever expect anyone, even an athlete or whatever, like athlete, alpha land, whatever, it's just going to be a stepping stone for what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, if I can help in the meantime, or, you know, just we can make it beneficial in the meantime. So, you know, great, but like, it, just give me a heads up and I'll figure it out. You know what I mean? There should never be like any sort of, you know, over or like almost uncomfortable commitments and shit, you know? So you yeah. said you only use 30% of the, of the land. Like, what do you have planned? The favor of phase two, we're going to like where the field is when you walk into the, like the thing, we can do a four story building there. So that build, field, the, you know, when you're walking into the offline main entry, you okay. like turn around like right behind you, there's like a fenced in. Oh field. yeah. 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 So, oh, that's yours. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Sure. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. That. And also like, Pretty much all the way down to the dirt in the back. It's like we fenced off everything to just be sure people weren't taking the whole property. But like, man, we're gonna do a four story building there. Our fleet will move there. We have the hotel building, which will be like a huge WeWork space. We're doing like com- WeWork kind of. Wait, wait, wait. So you're moving the Al fleet offices to the four story building you're talking about. Correct. So what's gonna take place in that, space? So if you go look at like life, like what Lifetime is doing now, Equinot, they're building these kind of like bigger communal sort of areas, right? Where it, it, especially now with the the generation that you know having those spaces where you can really truly almost like the gym lounge concept, but way bigger. You have the event room. Mm. You have these big spaces that you can, you know, we can accommodate to in, you know, a, a membership plus or whatever that you can come content with. room. Yeah. You know, exactly. hear, hear me out. You pay studio. Somebody pays fucking a hundred dollars extra. Yep. And then they have a special barcode or a special like scanner and they can go into it seven. and they can see like there's a bar or something like that. Yep. You know, the, the building in front building E it, it was going to be the hotel. The 11,000 square foot facility, like building, it's completely demoed out and ready for build for that. So it'll be an increase in membership. We have conferences all fucking beautifully like designed, but just where you can come in, it's exclusive. We have like, you know, certain areas that are quiet, some that you just need to like rent out, whatever it's, that, that'll all be included. I have a proposal for you right now. Yeah, yeah. So in the patio that you have right now, you convert it to a day club. So fucking yeah, yeah. every Saturday and Sunday during the day, there's a day club. People can come. It's probably going to be like fitness people. They can connect. Drink, party, you throw a pool in there. Okay, well, like, uh, what's uh, another 50 grand, bro? You throw a fucking pool uh, in there. Yeah, fucking, and this time we get the bank to do it, you know? Yeah. But yeah, fuck yeah, bro. And maybe have a little pool party. You know? Yeah. Have some alcoholic that would beverages. be sick. You know what I'm like, saying? You can make this, you can make this literally salts. one big, you can make this one big just influencer orgy, you but know, Brandon, all there. I'm wondering... If you do have a pool party, you gotta have alcohol. What are you? What are you gonna what, drink? What kind though? of seltzer? Yeah, would you, I have no idea. Bro, any, I, I don't like the seltzer. I, I think now. you're like plan. You're planning on doing something, right? Or, I don't know. Because I'm also planning on doing something. Really? Are you yeah, guys, are you guys I'm planning inspiring together? Bro, I feel like I could, we could probably come up with something. I mean, yeah, why, I th- why do two separate? Ones? I think right now we are actually like going in on something, maybe like an alcoholic beverage, like a seltzer. It might be called like La Seltzer or something that you know him and I are gonna oh, be La in on. Salt. I think I've heard of that. Yeah. Oh, cool. So. Yeah. Like you just you you and you have your own retailer like, bro. bro you be, I got I, I, I make sunglasses some and shit. Like who's like like somebody who's making sunglasses like they can get their own like retailer store because I remember you telling me that you're gonna rent out um those buildings up front yep. back on the road yep. um you're gonna rent out those to people who want to like retail some stuff so maybe like a seltzer company and a, and a sunglass mm. company. The world is a playground. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, so if those if you guys didn't get that, uh, yeah, so Christian and I like last Seltz is a real thing. It's fucking coming too. It's coming. Damn. So wait, take so, from that what you will. So committed much, now, bro. We're committed now. Yeah, no, we're in it. <laughs> yeah, we're in it now. That was how much. What's the total amount of money that you've spent on gym equipment so far? Specifically, like Specific, workout equipment, bro, like that, treadmills. That's tiny compared to the right. I'm just curious, like because um, I know it's not cheap. So when I moved from the. You guys started out at the Alfie Gym, the Summer Park 7-Eleven one. So when I moved into that space, I spent 150 on purchasing like a huge chunk of it. Like all the hammer strength, like the Jungle Gym, like a lot of those hammer strength pieces were added on. So I, I like f- from equipment that I have fully in there, probably like 500, 550, 600 grand maybe. 600 grand plus the 150 that you bought initially for Alfie Gym? Probably 600, 700 total of equipment. Okay. Th- that's not including floor. I mean... The, the equipment's the, not the, the the big part, right? The, that's uh, and I, a lot of it's those calibrated stuff. plates, bro. Those that's just expensive, bro. That's <laughs> yeah. just expensive, and yeah. they're treated like shit, man. It kills me seeing those treated like like they are. But you know, equipment's equipment, and it has to be replaced, has to be maintained. No one's going to take care of it. You know, so like you know, treat it like it's their own. Really, that's what you learn. Yeah, as a gym. And when people fucking you see out of order machines, it kills my heart, man. 
But you just got to, you know, get a staff in place and a system in place to be able to get it back up and running soon and just not get too attached to it. So what's your total gross revenue per month from day passes, memberships, yada, 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 from Alpha Land and, and retail too? Like yeah. you sell clothes there. What's your total gross revenue from Alpha Land per month? Do you want me to tell you what I thought it was going to be? Sure. I thought that in a year, the first year, I thought we were going to be able to hit like four to five mil total revenue. Total, total over the revenue. course of the whole year. The whole four year. to five mil. Okay. And that, that number, Alpha Land Gym, before we moved to Alpha Land, was doing 900 to 1.1 $1. 1. per in, year. In a year, yeah. A million okay. dollar revenue in a year. So I thought we could 4 exit. Okay, We're on track so for eleven to twelve <laughs> this year. <laughs> so you're doing almost a mil a month. A mil a month. And how yeah, much of that? Baby. So I remember you you told me that January, I think you said two hundred thousand a day passes. Uh, we were doing like seven, six to seven thousand day passes a month during summer, which is fucking crazy. We do more Wait, day so passes. But what about January? You said something six, about January. Six to 7, you said January. You Wait, fucking because that was the month that you month? opened. June was the, bigger. June was bigger. Yeah. So that was during the summer shredding thing. Yep. Because, yeah. I mean, I, I could see it. Like, you're in the gym, and there's fucking, it's dick to butt. Like, everybody's next to each other. Dick to butt. That and the biggest, a retail's one. a huge one. Retail's, a, <laughs> Alpha Eats, like, retail's the biggest one, right underneath, like, the day passes you, and the concession. So, so the retail in, in Alpha Land actually makes more than day passes? Uh, it's, a per, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, retail's doing between three to 400 a month. Holy, that's insane. Fuck. Because I'm not going to lie, like, no disrespect. I don't see anyone going over there and, like, grabbing a, grabbing a, pair of fucking also, leggings and go to the, go to the also, cashier. To I don't see there. You got that long table and all the retail stuff is all the way at the left. And I never really pay attention to what people are doing over there. And then all the way to the check right in, is where you check in. in. Yeah. Yeah. So I never really see. Mm, but now true. that I think about it, I do see I people. Think now that Diana has bought like 150, 200, 300 bucks worth of stuff. And would I be sure to do it, especially the And multiply that, that by out. like a thousand members? What? Like, what, what? Any item that sells that quick online, I guarantee... Like, it's, it's almost like a promise. I promise you will have it at retail. Like if it means putting less inventory online, I just want to be sure like that core, you know, we so, always have those in stock. So if it sells out online, you can still get it retail at Alpha Land is what you're saying? If it's there. If it's there. It, it, but okay. it's like, I, I'll pull more inventory than w w we normally would for retail just to be sure we have it there. For I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, yeah, I mean, it's for Alpha Land, it's doing like 80, 70 Five to eighty percent of the total retail right now. Alphalete's killing it, bro. <laughs> Holy shit! Like, wait, wait, what? What, what of Alphalete? Yeah, bro. Wait, what do you mean? So more, so eighty percent of all of Alphalete sales comes out of Alphalene. Are you serious? Are out of the retail? Yeah, out of out of yeah, yeah. the retail. Like so the majority Alphalete. of the clothes that are sold by Alphalete, the that clothing is company, fucking crazy, are sold at the gym then online. No, no, no out of all of the comp like Inaka, Buff Bunny, like all of the retail. That oh, the oh, that goes there. oh, I'm tripping. But I think Alphalete's bigger than than, than you think, man. No, no, but yeah, what I'm mean? saying, what I'm saying is okay, but Alphalete is probably doing seventy five percent plus of the total retail because you're saying right. you got buff bunny you got right. inaka but like alpha elite that's what people are going there for that's what they're buying the most often so if 75 percent, you said 400k so let's the say the whole company though it, which is interesting as fuck because like we have uh canada distribution we also have an eu store so we have three websites for alpha elite, right uh -huh. and, and we have to decide how much inventory do we send to that store how much do we send to canada and right now it's about a nine to ten percent goes to the uk to eu mm -hmm. and then we have 12 percent that goes to canada Bro, like right now, the retail store is doing almost 10, 11% of the total Alpha Elite shit. That's what okay. I was asking. Okay. okay. And, and that's, that's, that's more reasonable. Yeah, I was no, going to say that's one location. That's substantial. Well, that tells you yeah. a lot about Houston. Yeah. That tells you a lot about where you're at and like that, like you're from here. Yeah. And I think a lot of people respect that and they're like, it Yo. wasn't like that Alpha Elite gym though, right? <laughs> Wait, so, no, so, well, so you're saying, you're saying 10% of all Alpha Elite clothes that are manufactured are sold to Alpha Land. It's getting to that, yeah, that number. Like, so, it's so like around styles. there. But keep in mind, like, the, that retail store can only hold, like, 20%, 30% of what we have on, like, of styles, right? Okay. We really have to pick and choose the best ones to go in that, that space. Uh -huh. But the online store, we have fucking 10,000 SKUs. And you said 10%, 400K. I mean, you could do a little math, see how much uh, Alpha Elite We're Elite's on making. track for $120 million this year. <laughs> Alpha Elite? Yeah. The, the clothing That's company. fucking insane. In terms of clothing? That's yeah. insane. So with, with Anaka and Buff Bunny and all these companies that are like selling out of your, you have your hand in those, right? Like they're, so, set, so they're what giving we, you a instead cut. Instead of like buying, yeah. So the easiest way I thought to do it was, you know, you, you know, Charlie, Heidi, you guys be responsible for stocking the store, right? All I want, like we'll sell this, I'll, I'll do the staff, I'll do your retail build, all that shit. Just at the end of the month, say Anaka sells 30K that month or Heidi's, whatever they sell. I'll, I'm going to take 30% as a fee and give you back 70 of whatever mm -hmm. you sell. So and you and you cover everything else. You cover like because it's it's yeah. your employees Security. and shit. Yeah, yep. So do 
they hike up their prices to make up for that difference at the retail or is no, the, no, no, the margins are good enough? Uh, margins, yeah, margins are good enough to do it. And it's also like, I have to be selective and like 30% is a good chunk. But yeah. if you go to any retailer, you're immediately at 50%. If, <sighs> and if you go, if you were to go build a retail store, fucking New York or Miami, bro, you're paying fucking top dollar for a good spot. Mm-hmm. Alphaland's bringing 7,000 day passes a month with your demographic. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's just a chance to like, if anyone wanted to come out, I've got a list of 20 companies that want to come in and, pay, and it would give way more than 30%. But I didn't want to do that because I wanted to keep it core. Yeah. Like those are the fucking friends that have been with since the beginning. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Throw yeah. me in there though. Yeah. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm gonna, like, yeah. So, <laughs> but with, with 3D, because I know 3D, like, I want to know how much are you selling out of, out of Alpha Land with 3D? Because every single, like, I almost see it every day. It's just people drinking 3D. It's, it's yeah, all over. I mean, that shit, it, it, it's the number one selling drink we have by like 5X. Like we sell and we sell a lot. We, we sell whatever, right? We sell whatever I think is going to move. Like with Alpha Land, it's not like, a, oh, I'm only going to keep my companies in here because it's like whatever. If, if something's going to sell better than fucking this or Ghost or whatever, bring it on, right? Because it's yeah. like mm-hmm. I want that the business. But you're to, but you're you're literally that's what's selling. Yeah. So it's not even because like you're a part of it. You have that in there because it's fucking selling. Correct. And that's mm. sick as fuck. Correct. But yeah. with, I want to know like because I take like if I drink a 3D on like an empty stomach, my hands start trembling. Mm-hmm. Like what? What the fuck do you put? Yeah, in that I don't bro? know what's in it because it's not like it's to me. It is not like Monster or any hey, other that thing. That shit ain't caffeine, bro. Listen, they don't. They send us packages and stuff. Like you guys send us packages. You probably don't even know, but they send us packages, and <laughs> we're not sponsored or anything. But like, I this th- shit hits hard. That on. is the only energy drink that yeah. like I feel because I'm like a high stem person. That's the only energy drink that I feel that I'm like whoa. And, and uh, there's two two reasons. One, Monster's like 140 milligram caffeine. This one's going to be 200. But I really think almost why it hits you different. This is way less carbonation. Because it's less carbonation, that was, that was the biggest selling point. I didn't like, I could have one, maybe two monsters, but that, my stomach would be like, fuck, like bloated as fuck, right? And, and I wouldn't feel just comfortable. And so with that, I feel like you drink it way fucking quicker. You, I drink this so quick because it tastes like juice. Yeah. Right. No, it and, and, it's and good that's, as fuck. It just it's good as fuck. You, you guys killed the flavors. Like and all the flavors are so good. A, a juice like taste with less carbs and monster and 200 and more caffeine with minimalist branding. That was mm-hmm. the concept. So caffeine's the main stim in there. That's the only thing, yeah. Yeah, I don't believe you. I swear to my, God, my my uh, my friend he he edits my videos. He's gonna edit this podcast. He said that the first time he walked into Alfley, he saw the cans and just immediately because he he doesn't he doesn't really like fuck with the gym that much. Immediately he saw how aesthetically pleasing the cans were, and then we went on the website because he ordered some uh, today. Actually, he ordered some three Ds, and he was on the website and how like minimalist stuff, right? the website is fucking yeah. sick. Yeah. Like it is so dope. We like the every designer. the can like you Wait, can. Have uh, you Eric guys was go, gonna order some? Eric ordered some because oh, he's shit. been like drinking ours because you guys send us some and he's been drinking it. He felt bad, so he's, he ordered his own. Yeah. And he said that he was like, you can spin the can like three. I looked at the It's, it's a six. It's size. so dope. Have you, you haven't seen the Alphaland website, have you? Alphalandstore.com, the best website you'll ever fucking see, I promise you. I want to check you it out. You literally is scroll it, is down. Is it just as good on mobile? It's, it's made for mobile. All right. That's good. what everything needs to be is because sometimes when the, when the, when the websites are Alphaland made for desktop, what? it just fucks everything up. Alphalandstore.com. And literally just keep scrolling down and the whole thing just like, here, check it out. Here, let me see. Scroll down like the. I didn't even know there was a website to be honest. Yeah. How many visitors? Like unique visitors. Not many. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, go to go to Alpha Not many. <laughs> Go to Alpha Land and go. You put check all it out. this work in for like a hundred visitors, bro. A hundred percent. All this, like, yeah. Oh, oh wow, this sick. is dope. It's like three D. You get the render and everything, and it keeps you going. Let's throw up a screen. Rec- let's throw up like a screen recording of everything right now. Wait, should I put that down in the vid? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wait. What, and then do, is there? What does it say? What number does it say on that? Like, how long have we been recording? We have 54 minutes and 10 seconds. 54, 10. And I've seen you post some 3D renders of, like, what you have planned behind the gym and stuff like that. Like, what? Yeah, when is that getting going? That now. Like, now we're in the permitting process for all that stuff. So, like, mm-hmm. we're, we're doing the, I don't know if you saw, like, in gym two, we took out the, the barriers that were there. So, we're putting, like, a full-on, like, track there to be able to just, like, lunges, yeah. lunges whatever the fuck to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing, like, uh, we're the turf. You got, like, the super, like, athletic guys just sprinting 40-yard yeah, You, you know what made me want to do it was when James Harden came Holy in. Holy shit. He, he, so, yeah. Like, no, I he, saw he, when he came. He went to gym three, straight to gym three, came know, out of his urus and went right, right in. he fucking told me, he goes, are you gonna, are you going to put turf in the field? I, and that was the one thing. Where, turf was 500 grand. To feel to do that, uh, like a football field, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so okay. I just like I ended up like leveling it and just like doing the grass and trim it. But he goes, you know, put and 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 that kind of 
made me realize, man, the people that are starting to come here, like we had Russ, just like these names that are coming. Yeah, Russ, and, the fucking right, rapper, it, sure. It, it, yeah, thanks, Harry. I didn't know the fuck he yeah, was. Yeah, Harry, <laughs> Harry. <laughs> Harry was doing a Harry. fucking tour I, with him. I'm like, who's I think that? I go, He's like, Harry's Russ. like, come down me. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm doing some design shit right now. <laughs> it took me two days, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm like just with. Are you going to do turf? We're not doing, but I'm doing a full, like the feel. I'm doing all like, out. if James Harden comes, we get everybody else as well, right? If, right. if we kind of establish his names, he's a young dude. Man. He's he's like 32, bro. He's really, he's uh-huh. young, but he's already looking, he, you know, investments and shit like that. Alpha Athletic Sports Performance, right? Just pitching that idea where we, on the property, build out like a full, like, but with that said, and you have all these strength and conditioning coaches, these big name people coming in, you better ha- be prepared for those mm-hmm. opportunities. When he, when he came down, I realized I'm not prepared for these opportunities. So it's like, mm-hmm. you just have to constantly be thinking like, how can I get more of that demographic? How can I get the sports and agility, like the high school, you know, like that kind of demographic with the, the with the athletes, with like the higher end, you know, yoga moms and shit. How can I get that <laughs> while keeping athlete athlete? You ever see, um, yeah. you ever see those public, I got a pee, hold on. You ever see those public parks where, um, wait, does everyone have to pee? I have to pee. I'm good. Okay. Does uh, like those public parks and they're like all there, it's all turf and there's like probably 600 yards of just turf. Yeah. Like, would that be something you'd be willing to do? Uh, so that field that is like where I'm going to do the four story. I think I'm going to do that in the meantime there. Cause that's ready to go. I yeah. Mean, it's not as big. And, but. and not like I've seen, I mean, I used to practice, like we would play lacrosse and we would like, the team would like have Intermurals? to like rent out. Yeah. 100%. And, like, and like you just run like every 6 PM on like Wednesday, they rent it out and whatever. The, the only like limiting factor for so many of these like opportunities and stuff isn't like, it's literally just the staffing, bro. It's the staffing and like building the structure for it. Cause right. like it, the, the opportunities are there. It's just like, we literally can't, it, it's almost like there's so much on the plate where I have to pick and choose where I put mm-hmm. ten, and the attention has to stay on athlete for, for, for most of it. Right. Right. And so it's like in kind of building a team, kind of building out those, like the bullshit, like paperwork and, and like the, whose responsibility is what, what if that person didn't report? Like that's the shit that like I hate doing, but that's the part that I need in order to go at the rate I'm trying to go at. We used to have these big fucking lacrosse tournaments, like 20 plus teams. Like I'm thinking you get three or four football fields. Like, like like just people coming in, they rent out. It's like a whole weekend. Like that's what drive so much. Tra- I, I'm not, I'm not spitballing here, bro. Like, like you don't gotta listen to me. Like I'm now that I'm thinking about it, there's so many opportunities where you can just, um, like people are flying in for these tournaments, you know, and it's just driving so much fucking traffic there. Bro. And we, we say I can get, three NBA players to come and host a basketball one. Yeah. Just to like show, make, you know, show face and kind of like give some tips and shit. Yeah. It's like, I'm trying to build and, and it's not, at this point, it's not it, just it, a gym. It's, it's coming, not like, bro. Yeah. Like, it, it, James Harden says the best fucking facility he's ever seen. Mm-hmm. He was in VIP show. You know, we kind of like, and it was, it's insane to hear, man, but it's like, that's what it's kind of drawing now. So Ronnie, Col- like, I never thought I'd work out with Ronnie Coleman. Yeah. What the fuck? Like, you know, and, and it's almost like now if I can just set up those, the boring pieces to be able to do these bigger things, bro. There's, there's going to be, we've, I've had offers to go do 12 locations in the next three years, two years. And do they you want to, to or not? I'm just not prepared. Okay. It's like, I like my, inf- if I go do that, which sounds like a fucking blast right now though, our fleet will crumble because I, I'm so, it, it'll involved. put everything to a, fo- to a halt. Exactly. And you want to, you want to put your focus on, I, I have to, or else like if that, if I fuck up on out, if I make two bad launches in a row that have shitty product, like that reputation will trickle down and mm-hmm. it, I have to be full on with it. You know, until I can, I think in three years time, two years time, hopefully I'll have a much better structure. I like, that's what I'm learning now. That's my, that's my weak part right now is the, the, the responsibility, the, the kind of the boring shit. You know what I mean? That, that I've always found boring. I yeah. like going to making content and thinking big and, you know, executing projects, but not listening to fucking HR problems. Yeah. You know, and there, and there, I just, there's, I mean, with the, another location and shit like that, that would be just, that's insane. I'm going to do seven of them, seven of them at one time. And bro, like for the long, for about four. But I don't want that though, because I want but, people but, to come but to Houston. Not Alpha though. Land. Alpha uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because I was thinking. And then there's only one to keep it, only keep one. it exclusive. LA bro, here in Houston. Exactly. I was thinking LA, like exactly. if you, yeah. It's like Have you separate, ever been to Zoo Culture? Gyms? Yeah, uh, no, haven't. It's haven't. fucking shit. You could, like, bro, I swear to God, I swear to God, bro, I swear to God. You know, Gym 3, so everyone who who hasn't been to Alpha Land, Gym 3 is like an outdoor gym. It's it's kind of just like a warehouse gym, no AC whatever, like sweaty, like rugged rates, it, it, rugged weights. It gives that yeah, yeah. old school feel like that. Like low key is better than, than zoo culture. It, it, it was like, it was I wouldn't say that, but I, it's, it's no, a, but, it's but, but there's the amount of hype that zoo culture has. It just doesn't, 
You know, yeah, it's also true. different in LA. Like if I were to try to do it, at, what Alpha Land is in LA, not a fucking. Oh chance yeah, no, I think that's why that's why Bradley's like opening uh, a zoo in Austin. Yeah, they, it's a lot have, cheaper. Exactly, bro. Like LA, like I, I know what he's paying. It's it's a fucking lot for like for for what in and, and he's done a great job with what it is. You know, with the space and kind of being where he is, like staying in LA and shit. I would never. Do okay, yo. So yeah. credit credit to Bradley for yeah, for yeah, making yeah. like. What he's got, he's doing good. Shit's yeah, fucking yeah, expensive. Yeah. We get it. Yeah, 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 but and yeah, just uh, anyone, anyone they can start a gym and make it. So, gyms are hard fucking businesses, bro. Like mm-hmm. on their own, gyms are fucking tough. Like low mar, it, it's a, it's not a business that I would be doing if I just didn't love. Yeah, you know, making a facility for. I, I only made a gym so I could go fucking film. You know, because I got kicked out of every gym in Sugarland. Every single for filming. Day. Yeah, immediately, yeah. just like black. They couldn't go in because they knew I would, you know, sneak a camera and shit. So when do you think, when with Alpha Elite, the Alpha Elite gym, yeah. the one that we trained at, when, did you ever like break profit with that? Yeah, yeah. So once we were at that million mark, right? Like, and, and kind of hitting that and 900 long, to 1. How long did that take? Four, three years, four years. I would four, say. Years. four years. Four years. So with right now with Alpha Land, when do you think you're going to break profit? Profit At the rate we're going by year two, and a, two, two and a half. With the whole, but keep in mind, Alpha Land was, is only the bottom floor. Like, I spent a lot of fucking money on Alpha Elite as well. And, like, okay. that's kind of, like, I always I look at it as, like, one compiled venture, right? And so when you break up out, that'll probably be a year, year and a half, which you, I, I thought it'd take four or five years. Do you think Alpha Land has helped online sales because that of the... That was the whole concept. Yeah. And has that, have you seen that happen yet? The, the online sales have been very consistently, like, not directly, but I know long term. Yeah. I kind of like put it builds the, that brand image. Exactly. And yeah. you notice Alpha Land font, the same fucking font as Alpha Elite. Yeah. The color scheme. If you look at the building, you think Alpha Elite. Like that, 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 that was the whole concept. Was the tip, what does an Alpha Elite gym look like? But in Alpha Elite, and kind of by branding it Alpha Land, though, you almost open up more. Oh, fuck Alpha Elite. I'm not Team Alpha Elite, whatever. Like it's, it doesn't feel like that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It kind of opens it up to be able to bring other brands and just kind of be more open with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like, I didn't really ever think about Alphalete, the clothing company. Like, I didn't, I knew some girls liked the Amplify leggings, but that's basically as far as it ever went. Yeah. But then Alphalete Gym kind of hyped it up a little more, but not that much. But then when Alpha Land opened, now it's like, oh, Alphalete's like at the forefront of the fitness industry. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I think if you can just like, can you know how we talked about the gym shirt guys with like, you know, just supporting it, right? I'm a true believer. Like, I, I swear to God, I'm not just talking out of my ass, but if you like, if you, have a platform where you can just let people do their thing and you can truly say, I, I think I have the best gym in the world because of whatever like reasons. And if you take feedback, like, you know, Hey, you get an ad machine, like one of these from whoever it may be, or hey, fix it, you know, maybe rearrange the equipment, too crammed in here. Or like you need a, you know, a third fucking side back sack squat, like things like that and actually implementing them and shit, like in building that facility where people just want to train. It's literally better than anything else in the area mm-hmm. and shit. Like, I, I think that by doing that, it, it's just more of an organic sort of a, a very long term organic, justifiable, not like, you know, fanboy fucking bullshit kind of kind of decision to want to be there. Right. We need more cyber attack squats. But got two on the way, bro. All right. Thanks. I yeah, think yeah. I think that is definitely an acquired taste yeah. at Elfland because you're going to be like odds are there's going to be people filming yeah. and there's going to be a lot of shit going on. That's why you don't see a lot of like the older guys who are just like banging out weights. Like that's and, all and that if LA you do, fitness. It's always gym one. Right. Right. But the, the con for phase two, we're going to expand the saunas, the fucking, the, the higher end sort of area. When does phase two start? Uh, literally like it's already tonight, starting. right now he's going, <laughs> bro, he's going bro, over I there swear right to now. God, the worker Put, pulls out his phone, makes text. Yo, start bro, phase two. I can uh, alpha kids day, the day like that. Yeah, like, I remember that you telling me designed, that, bro. that design, bro. the, the building it's, it's just like a hollowed out warehouse. Like the, the L the around storage. the parking lot. Yeah. You said that, um, I remember you saying you were going to do a sauna and tanning beds or shit like that. Connect to the four story building. Right. So it's like, gonna, so the, the backs connect to the four story pool, first floor, all the way down second, third, fourth, alpha athletics. And then we have the hotel building, which would be the WeWork space. And then the main building will just literally be those bigger rooms. So you're going to have to employ a lot of fucking people, though. Yes. And right now, how many employees do you have at Alpha Land? 200. I, I, my, the whole, like, umbrella, 205. What do they get paid? Like, minimum wage or? <laughs> I think it's like, I heard it was $15. <laughs> um, Am I right? Is it $15? $15 She's like, start, unfortunately Alpha not. Land, $15 starting, but Alpha Lee, we have a lot. We have salary. I mean, okay. almost, you know, everyone's salaries and we have, yeah, it's a lot of expense. So if... 
when he opens up phase two and you guys need a job and you're local in Houston, fifteen dollars yeah. an hour right there at Alphaland. We're off the Which that is that is that's good. Company, that's company standard. That is good. Fifty percent higher than minimum wage yeah. in Texas, yeah. at least. Yeah, right. So yeah, Texas, yeah. What, Texas. Yeah. Seven something. Oh shit! Oh, so it's twice. Then. I thought it was like ten. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, thought thought it was, no one was gonna, I don't know. I have no, no one would come to our distribution center to fucking pack his Amazon. Like they're fucking twenty bucks, almost twenty bucks an hour right off the bat. But it's like. Just to get people to do those jobs, and that was for distribution. Not people who work at the gym for less, for sure. But just to make it kind of simpler, and like just we had a clean slate, fifteen bucks flat, boom. And if someone's not not performing, we we have I have a list of two thousand resumes, bro, fucking ready mm. to go. Two thousand I mean, resumes right now. I made a job like, on her Holy website, the career page. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. Holy shit! But that's how, because when you're there, there's so many connections to be made. You know, you don't know who's gonna walk through those doors. Yeah, because there's yeah. because now that there's so much like. I feel like in the beginning when Alphaland first opened up in January, it was really popping and then it kind of like kind of leveled out a little bit and then summer shredding came and now it's like, boom, like every single time, like there would be times that Alphaland, um, maybe March, March or April where like some people like some days no one would even talk to me, but now it's almost every single day. Like every I got, day, yeah. I got somebody, yo, I'm from XYZ. Like I'm from, I just flew here. Maybe it's because it's a summer month. I just month. drove 85 there's no, hours. There's no, there's no like school or anything like that. So people are traveling. From May to July. And then I'll tell you another spike is going to be the October, November. I was going to say, I think it's, I think it's smart that you have two summer shreddings a year because it's just often enough for people like they're just losing hype from the first summer shred. Boom. Second one. Exactly. And they're just losing hype from the second one. Boom. It's first wait, one wait again. Till next year, bro. You know, yeah. I'm being serious about that day club right. thing, bro. I'm being dead fucking serious because you did the summer shredding thing at Clay. You yep. could just do it at your own place. 100%. And sell your own beds, right? Like, 100%. That would, be, that would be so sad. You get a pool and shit like that. And it, what's crazy is like all the, you see how like the ideas start coming when you see, when you just kind of think, mm -hmm. fuck, there's a lot of damn shit. Yeah. It's literally whatever we want to do. Yeah. And mm -hmm. just like making it in a priority order. Like, okay, what's going to, what's going to take X amount of time versus where, and kind of like literally listing it out. Like, uh, uh, I know you want to touch on summer shredding. Like that right there, that concept of, you know, we have two shows a year or whatever, but leveling that up tenfold next year and starting how an organization. Why? Do oh, this, this is, is something said. that I we wanted said to bring this, up. Bro. We've this said is this. something that, that, that we both wanted to bring up. We were talking about it on, I think the last podcast, actually, um, summer shredding has gotten to a point where it's so big that it's kind of competing with people like NPC. So we were wondering, well, hate my ass, would you, <laughs> would you ever consider having summer shredding because right now the way it stands currently is if you do summer shredding that doesn't qualify you for shit it's right. more just for fun Correct. but as summer shredding levels are you peeing yes. as summer shredding levels up you're you know maybe two years ago it was kind of just like smallish guys that were competing yep. um that looked good now the but it wasn't anything crazy pro cards yeah crazy. right but now the people that are showing up like yep. the top five in each class are like NPC level, like they're big guys. Mm -hmm. So, would you ever consider joining the NPC so that Summer Shredding was an NPC sponsored event where if you qualified at Summer Shredding, you could go to a pro qualifier and get your pro card? Because honestly, the way I see it is it would have been a lot more fun for me because I just got my pro card and I had to qualify one week before at the Branch Warren Classic, which was fun. Shout out to Branch Warren. But it would have been cooler for me, considering I train there, to qualify at Summer Shredding yeah. and then go get my pro card. Um, I got a better idea. Or, yes, my other idea was you start your own organization that's completely separate and actually be a full-out competitor with the NPC. Yeah. But I'm going to wait until Suji to kind of say, like, what's, what, what would be the difference? Because All right, I'm, let's, let's... I'm a believer, bro. You don't, ever need, you don't ever start something if you don't have a unique twist on it, right? Like, there's no point. Well, let's break. What time does it say right now? Uh, an hour and eight minutes. One oh eight thirty five thirty five break. So we'll just break for now. Wait for Sush to come back, and we'll continue where we left off. Anyway, back to what we were saying. Um, so basically, what I said to him is, it would be more fun for me if I had qualified for my pro card at Summer Shredding, but it's not an NPC show, so I can't do that. Would you want to join NPC so it be, could be a qual pro qualifier qualifier, or would you want to start your own federation? And in that case, would the end goal of your federation still be qualification for the Olympia? Because that is kind of the end goal of every... Oh, that light just went out. Yeah, no, I don't know. Every big bodybuilder, yeah, they don't want to join a federation just to see that the end goal does not qualify for them, qualify them for the Olympia. Yeah. Right? And as of right now, 
the only way that I see it is you got MPC, then IFBB, then you have to win a pro show, qualify for the Olympia. Yep. So how would you spin it if you did start your own federation that competed with the NPC? What would the end goal be, and how would you make it just as big? How would you compete? It's a great question. It's a great you know topic, and I've put a lot of thought into this, man. And when he, I don't ever want to say directly compete with NPC because that goal of Olympia will never change for some people, mm -hmm. right? Like if that's the goal, then that's what you got to fucking do. Right. But how one, what makes us different? What makes the summer shredding different? And like, there's, I've had five t TV production companies and like Netflix and they're interested is fucking summer shredding right now. And the reasons because it's really the transformation class that draws that in, which is an interesting twist. But and we kind of, we offer that platform to be able to bring in more story, but we also still have the competitive ass fucking divisions. Right. Mm -hmm. But what do, what does a pro card do for you? It, if you, if you get to the level where you're like, you know, at the Olympian sponsorships, endorsements a mm. career right so you're thinking career, fuck the olympia bro. i can make my own thing so we're it set, doesn't have to be the end next goal. year seven shows okay there's uh -huh. seven shows across the world we're going to do chicago california one in here in houston we're going to go uh florida dublin uk canada new york right and each show and this will be so they're not fucking massive we don't have 500 it'll be a more manageable you know group now every division the top five of each division, possibly top four, are going to qualify to come compete in December. In December, the first week of December, we host at Alpha Land the the the, the essentially the Olympia that you have to qualify for. Then you get in. Okay, I got and you. If, if you top, if you qualify top four in your class, it's not just a, that the year that you'll be. Well, it'll like say a two year time frame. So if you want to, you'll put more aside. You can come back that following year mm -hmm. and still compete for that overall. Mm -hmm. What does the overall get? One guy, one female, right? And that right there, hundred thousand dollar cash prize Woo! for the female and for the male. A full on Yo. athlete, three year sponsorship, monthly salary. Retain and question. Yes. With the Olympia, it's a four hundred thousand dollar cash prize for open, fifty thousand I think for classic, yep. and men's. I don't know what it is. What will it be? What? How will the winner be versus like? All these. How will each division be fucking paid? Will it be one hundred k for each division or what? So. The, all the seven shows, the six shows leading up to that seventh one, will have like smaller cash prizes, right, for the winners. Uh -huh. But the main thing that we're selling is going to be the fucking career path. It's going to be like the the three year indoor. It, it, we are going to fucking Alfleet will be the main sponsor. Now, you don't think a lot of the front like these companies and stuff that we're associating with will a hundred percent like that is what people want. They want sustainability. They want when like if you're only counting on the phys like the physique for like. It's a different thing. Like I said, it'll never compete. If you want to be Mr. Olympia, then you have to go that route. Mm -hmm. But most people now, this day and age, they want to build their name. They want to build names. They want to build, they want to be somebody in the fitness industry, right? And a variable that's going to have to be considered to get that number one female and one guy. Yeah, we have the classes, right? That qualify all this. But we, in our transformation, I don't know if you guys have been to a show. But I've seen I've seen them, but I haven't, seen been, I haven't been to a summer show. In the transformation class, we have everybody that submits make a two minute video up to two minutes it's saying what their journey has been over the last four years right and really showing the progress of not just that prep but where the fuck did you come from what's the story and where are you at now right and so having those finalists create a video like who is this person what do they represent what do they stand for and kind of building that criteria that's a necessity to go and qualify to win the actual thing so it's mm. not just off physique. it will be physique to really qualify into that top 10 potential mm -hmm. that last piece is going to decide who we pick. But then, how is and that? How is that? How is that career sustainable? A three-year contract and like but anyone that's come into the brand that has won a show is now with us. Make it. the doors that open naturally have been so great and like sustainable for people that have won that that have come with the brand fully like taking advantage. So mm -hmm. it's like that cash prize along with like the guarantees that we can assert, like hundred k, bro. Like that, that's for, life changing to a lot of people. Like, yeah. But also like just the 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 entire like world of this like shit that we all do because right? it'll put more eyes on but, it but quick question but you can, can I just ask? yeah uh keep that on mental shelf because this is a very specific question so you're saying you do these seven shows around the world this basically qualifies you for the big show that's going to be in houston you go to this big show and if you win that you get the hundred thousand dollar cash prize but this winner is not just based on physique it's also based on how, where they've come Correct. from the transformation right. blah, blah blah okay um maybe my Maybe my transformation isn't as cool as someone else's, but I have a better physique and I end up winning. I go, I qualify at one of the seven shows, yep. then I go to the main show and I win classic physique, let's say. Yep. What will my cash prize be? 
doing that at, at the main show. Or are you the talking main about the show? The main show. The, the main, main, the big fucking Mr. One, Olympia. I don't have all the details worked out, but okay. that that one, I'm th- that's where we're looking for a one winners of each, right? And, uh-huh. and and maybe we'll of course be able to taper down and shit. And honestly, every summer shredding, like a lot of the people that we've met and like built these, like have all almost like used summer shredding as the door, right? right. To kind of like come in. And I think that with the Alpha Land groups that are going to be coming, like we bring, you know, just bringing in every, like what that pla- what that place can do. Is gonna open up just opportunities that are like yeah really nice level. Man. But I'm, like, I'm I want to challenge you though because I don't think that like let's say this guy like looks fucking sick and he has a crazy transformation. Leave it but to he, the people. But right, exactly. So he's yeah. a so he's like a let's say he's a doorknob, right? He can't talk to a camera. He doesn't he <laughs> doesn't have any personality. He's not good on social media. He doesn't know what he's doing. When that three years is up, what's what's gonna happen? That and that's the point. Like that, there's no guarantees, right? It, you know what I mean? Okay, like, that's on. You. That's what I just wanted. It's like we'll want, get, we're yeah. going to give you the platform for. We're going to give a, you opportunity. Right. Yeah. Under every door that we can, we're going to fucking push the shit out of it, mm-hmm. and you will be a face with the brand forever, right? Like you will be. It, at a certain point, that's up to. The, it's on you, and I will point. say there are some doorknobs that have been very successful because of the way they look. So like they get sponsorships, they look fucking sick, especially the open guys. No offense to the open guys, but there are some that are fucking doorknobs, but. They still do pretty well just because it's like, all right, you look that fucking sick, but you might not be able to talk to a camera, but we're still going to sponsor you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, and with that sponsorship, though, like, if it's a dead end, if it's a doorknob, that only goes so far, right? So it's, it's, and it's like that's that ultimately comes down to the person. If you can open the door and like, I think that you can see, I'm hoping to be able to see the true intention and sort of like passion behind who we're picking, you know, to, to become that face essentially for the entire thing for the year like pretty clearly by yeah. that point and okay like, yeah so you're gonna have this hundred thousand dollar cash prize that's the main winner yep. are you still gonna have smaller cash prizes for each overall winner of each division so we it just we do right now as well we do like you know each overall wins i think it's like a grand or twenty five uh-huh. something like that and then yeah so well, i'm talking about the big show that you have planned in the future the one that you have to qualify for yeah i assume it, the and, cash prize and, and the money's never like it, and the money's not a huge like you know factor that's like you know, if, if mm-hmm. it, I think The Rock was talking about doing, he talking about a million bucks. Yeah, right? he was going. To, he was going to do one in Atlanta, I think. Yeah, it, it and I, I don't know big, what happened. A to big it. show. I, it was COVID. COVID oh, like fucked sure. it all up, and then I think he just kind of yeah, threw like, the project away. Like, like I guess the the incentives and shit are all like I'm open to fucking ideas too. You know what I mean? Like, but I don't think the money is going to be the the big motivator for that final show. Okay, I, it's going to be the the, the opportunity. The opportunity. So, yeah. quick question though. Um, okay. Summer shredding right now. If you win, you get an Alpha Elite sponsorship, right? Um, three month, like yeah, three, yeah. Th- th- three month trial. Yeah. Uh, for me, one of the reasons besides that it's not NPC, so I can't get to the Olympia. One of the other reasons that I wouldn't do summer shredding is because I'm with Young LA, yeah. and I would still do the show regardless. But I would be worried that, well, are they going to want someone who's unsponsored and they might be biased in their judging because they know I'm with Young LA? And is that because be be like, there's going to be a lot of guys that are big and yeah. aesthetic that should win, that show up, that yeah. might already be sponsored by other companies? Yeah. And here's and just like I said at the beginning, it's like you, you can't create something that's going to be the, the almost like what every single person is going to want. Right. And so like in, in your scenario, you're a fucking pro already, bro. You know, you got, you, and this is going to be a more, I'm trying, my desire is to get into the yeah. fitness scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and if, if that, this is your chance, if this is this your, is your this is an opportunity to do it. And, and like, that's the crowd I'm shooting for. Okay. Like you're, I mean, you're up to I, bat. I can't get the, I can't get the guys that are really, literally like Olympia. Like that's not who I'm trying to get. Okay. I got you. You're I trying to you. get like the, the guys who they don't have a platform or like they're yeah. trying, they've been trying, nothing's been working. And then this is their chance. Like, yeah. and that's going to drive, I mean, I mean, the with, people would with, die for that, bro. People would die the, for that. With the competitive side of it, right? With, with, of qualifications and things like that, yeah. where, where they are based off physique, right? Because uh-huh. that, that's in order to even go to that final show, you have to like have that. So yeah. it, it, it's, I think it's a good mix concept. You know what I mean? Uh huh. And so, that, that's what keeps you different from NPC and IFBB. Yep. That way, it's not just direct competitor. Yeah, exactly. Okay. With everything going, like how everything's been going with Alpha Land, um, and, and, and like personally, like speaking, I'm sorry, I mean, no, control, you're good. You're good. But like personally speaking, like. I don't the, the, like me committing to trying to be an IP. I don't think it's in my cards, man. But it's like I know that for me, the biggest thing was yeah, how can it I? It kind of is. Buddy. You think so? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I, it, for me, it's it's like the opportunity. Like I think making that opportunity for people, just like even people that like show up out and kind of like you start seeing face and people are literally like blowing up and then kind of starting careers, man. You know, and almost taking that at a higher, creating that as the end goal for this specific 
thing, mm-hmm. which, and that's what summer shredding was a fucking YouTube series. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's almost like those, those are, that's what makes us unique. And that's, what's like tied to the summer shredding name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Cause there are a lot of people that put in a shit ton of work and have a great physique, but they just might not have the genetic potential to be Mr. Olympia. But it's like, this is their opportunity to kind of prove who they are because it's more than just simply how good are your DNA, how good is your DNA at birth? Yep. You know what I mean? There's more that goes into it with the whole transformation thing. Yep. I like that. Are you happy with the direction of like Alphaland right now? Like with it's 100%. I, yeah. I think it's, for me, it's just, I can't look at the place without just seeing what I need to fix. Yeah, like change. Well, yeah, of course. But like, I mean, it's a big relief to have it open. And it kind of just allows like, I think the most fun part of like, out of everything I do is the physical business. It's, it's alpha. It's like the gym shit. Like I love just like having something physically. So I'm not just on a computer fucking thinking about how many quantities to wear. Man, that shit gets like old real quick. Right. And trying to come up with new it's clothes. It's tangible. Like you can like, you're you can there. You know? Yeah. And like the only moments that'll impact me like emotionally and shit, I'm not an emotional person at all, but like the only moments that'll make me fucking holy shit is that summer shredding on the weekend when I'm looking at the fucking like mound of just like people that are like, you know, it's th- that, that feeling that you get, man, just seeing that shit. Like, It'll hit me once every few years. Right? <laughs> and, and like, but that feeling is like what I chase after, like almost like mimicking that feeling. Mm. You know what I mean? And like, that's why I, though the summer shredding, the organs, that probably won't, it's not going to make a fucking dime compared to what the other ventures are. But like, I think that setting like that is a priority for me. keeps me grounded and like doing it for the it's right. It's like reasons. home base. Just like the gym, yeah. bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like I want, I literally want the, I don't want to have to go, want to go to any other gym because I want every piece of equipment fucking here. You know what I mean? Like that kind of concept. Home base. So, we had some questions written down, but um, you think I, I could think, go pro? Bro? I, I think, yeah. Oh, <laughs> he's still thinking about it. He's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> said I could go pro. No, definitely, one hundred percent. Men's yeah. physique, yeah, yes. I mean, did you wait? So your last show, you just did one show. Yeah, yeah. Did you qualify to like go to the pro qualifier like, or uh, all the way till this point? It's always been. I literally, I diet for for that one finale. Like, you, you know, yeah. you did two back, like maybe I would have, if I would have won, I would have tried to go, you know, a week or two later and kind of like done something. But it's funny. Cause that's the way it was for me too, yeah. where I cared more about the first show than the second, even though the second was technically more important. When I won the first show, I was like, all right, like I'm, I'm done. I'm good. And I kind of went overboard on cheat meals the next mm. day for that reason, because I was like, I did what I came to do. And it was hard for me to get my head back in the yeah. game to yeah. do another show. But then once I, it was good that I flew to New Jersey and stayed with my coach in his apartment. So like I, he was keeping me on track. It's definitely on my mind. Like if you know, it, it is on my mind, just setting that goal. And I know that's a huge commitment, but again, like training to that level and that detail, like and being strict on myself, like I know I would have to be to get to that level is something that would be new to me, but it's, a, it's just a commitment. Like if I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to fuck, I need to fucking do it. I mean, I feel, you know I, I mean? personally feel like he already has a pro physique. He just hasn't, tried he just I hasn't done like tried. a pro qualifying show i don't, I don't I know like, shit i don't know shit about any of that so true i feel like okay given the guys that i saw at NPC universe i feel like if you went in it's top two in your class i definitely think you could have gotten that but um i was gonna say a lot of these topics we're probably not gonna get to each one of them because i think each one's gonna probably break off into its own tangent and we'll talk about it for 20 minutes but one of them that stuck out to me the most was how does how does Christian keep a work life balance slash is that possible as a multiple business owner? It's just a lifestyle, man. It, it's like, I, I don't think there's never like a true shut off switch. Yeah. You're working 24 seven. And, and, but I don't think it's work. You know, it's almost like even when I go home and I, I'm not on my phone, or I'm, I, I'm not thinking about or talking like, you know, Heidi may be talking about something that happened in her day, which is, it turns out to be, you know, something that's related to work, which kind of, you know, yeah. it all just kind of right. like, even on vacation for meshes days, together. Yeah. But you have to just like, once you accept it, if you, if you're enjoying it and it's part of your thing and it's not like, Oh fuck, I got to go. I got like, I don't, I'm not going to go answer email. Like, I don't fucking do that. I'll mm-hmm. have someone else do that. But like the things that need to get done with the business part, it's like you enjoy, I, it. I enjoy it. Yeah. I, yeah. I, and I just, I can't, I've never had a life without it, you know? And it's just like fun for me to not like, I do want to allocate and fucking have less responsibility where I have to be doing things. But at the same time, like this is fucking if it keeps you part going. of the job, man. You know. Yeah, yeah, and I was I was gonna say I feel like the whole work life balance question yeah. is more aimed at the people that fucking hate their job. So they need to like the whole phrase itself is kind of 
fucked up. It if you think about up. it, work, work life. life. Yep. It's like, okay, when you're at work, you're not living your life. It's like, well, that's a fucked up way to think about it. So go and if you're hobby. doing, yeah, if you're yeah. doing what you enjoy doing, you're saying it's very stressful and it's a lot of work, but it what gives you I this feeling. Doing? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, it gives you this feeling of intense accomplishment and it's something that fucking wakes you up every day and keeps you going. Then it's like your work is your life. And that's not a bad thing. If you enjoy what you're doing, Bro, like, I, you know how I said the only emotional moments I've fucking ever had were, like, where I, were almost, like, seeing those were, like, you know, where I'm fucking clicking by on my first gym equipment. Like, those moments, there's only been, like, four in my life, right? But it's, like, I know Heidi's each one listening, of those. like, that's his <laughs> only emotional moment. Are you serious? But, you know, like, those, what, it, it, what it kind picks, of creates those and shit is, like, <laughs> it, it's, it always goes back to, like, doing the work. So, you know what I mean? And, like, when you really invest so much fucking time into something, then and like truly fucking like put your goddamn all like whatever yeah. it is or take that risk or whatever it's like eventually when it comes and you see it like flirt that's the most rewarding feeling ever yeah like yeah shit like really I mean like, especially like, when, like you when you put, put everything on the line in, in your fucking and take her for a ride yeah let her drive it and, and, and let her fucking you know get kicked back in the seat it's like when when it was scary as shit it's like that moments you'll never forget that mm-hmm. yeah, or and, buying and your dad that car that's a, that's my, one of the yeah. videos that I saw that I was like damn this shit just like. That it was, was one of those feel good videos to watch. Bro, I can't even watch it back because like there's I, I couldn't. I just, it's one of those that you you don't want to. I don't know. It, it's um yeah. There's there's those moments and even Alfie's my, getting my mom in the kitchen. You know she did it out of my house for fucking twelve years. Like, yeah, the sandwiches and now she has a kitchen that yeah. she can do all her shit and like it, it's like those are the reasons. I literally bought Alfie because I had a fucking kitchen. You know that was a huge <laughs> reason. I swear to God. Yeah. But like those are the the rewarding pieces. You know. Hmm. Yeah, I think that you what? definitely changed like a, like so many people's lives. Like not only like em- employing people here at Alpha Land because I know people have like left their jobs and like like fuck it, like I'm gonna I'm gonna apply at um at Alpha Land. So like you've changed like a, like I mean you changed my life for sure because like if you weren't here then I wouldn't be here. You know, same. So I mean, yeah, same so, too. There's so many like, we're, opportunities. We're in such different worlds too. But it's mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. It's, I, I appreciate you saying that. Man. I, you know, especially being, going back to the very beginning of the first thing you said, where it's like you know the first encounter at the gym that I heard about, you know, yeah. and I've always kind of respected you guys. like stay in your life. I even brought up athlete to you, bro. I was like, Hey, you know, are you maybe interested in possibly, you know, coming out? You're like, no, this young lady's fucking fam. I respect the fuck out of that. Yeah. I remember that. Uh, yeah. That the, yeah. I'm and, like, sorry, young lady's family. And yet we're still fucking here. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, yeah. it's gotta oh, be, sure. you know, it, it's just, I, I believe in things will come back. If you, if you have good, if you have like good karma, you believe in good intent, karma. hundred percent, bro. Yeah. It's like, if something don't work out, it's been 10 years or maybe we'll be fucking, you know, something will pop up and we'll do it together. I mean, bro, you I was going to, I was about to get kicked out of your gym and now we're fucking, now we're doing this. I'll be living ourselves, on a bro. beach Cheers, somewhere man. in 10 years, bro. I'll be training once a week, full body. Bro, same. And that, that's what I'm, I don't know about this pro life, bro. I'm ready to get fat and just go to Perry's. No, but I think like for me Perry's. now is the time to do that because yeah. I know that I'm not going to want to chase What's your Mr. next Mr. Olympia? Thing? My Doing my next pro. thing yeah. uh, would be a pro show where I qualify for the Olympia. Okay. So if I win a pro show, which is very fucking hard to do because... Wait, was Universe a pro show or was Pro Qualifier? No, co- Pro Qualifier. Okay, so when okay, I was okay, going okay. into the Universe show, I was like, is, is oh... You handc- I saw a photo of him handcuffed at your show. No, because the they, didn't let, us, they <laughs> didn't let us film. They yeah, didn't they, let us film. They had yeah. like all these signs. They're like, you can't film here, blah, blah, blah. And I'm, so I'm thinking like, what the fuck kind of bullshit is this? Because it's like, you're all, like, people are always talking about like growing the sport. Like we want to make it mainstream yep. and then you don't even let people film for a YouTube video. Yeah, you got to pay you know what I'm saying? 80 bucks to get the picture. Yeah, and like it's sneaking my camera in that's another the NPC is like yeah that's it's not really like it's just doesn't align with like what I'm trying to get yeah. you know what I mean so it's all respects and shit but like I, but think, I think we can do different you know? basically to answer your question when I did the first show Branch Warren I was like all right I'm competing against amateurs a lot of true novices people that have never competed whatever but then when I went to the Universe show I was like I was explaining to the camera if you guys have watched the video I was like this is not these are not amateurs every single person that's here is here because they qualified and beat out a bunch of other people. So this is like the real deal. But at a pro show, it's even one level above that. This is, these are all people that have beat out everyone that all those people beat out everyone at their amateur show. So it's like one more step up the ladder. And it's like, these guys are the real fucking deal. And then if Olympia if is so to, hard if to you don't think wanna, about. If you don't have like say winning Olympia is not your goal. Then is there enough motivation to still? That's like a deeper question and shit. But you know what I mean. If 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 you're not saying I I'm gonna I want to become Mr. Classic Physique Olympia, then yes, I guess that would be my goal. But I'm not 
going to take steps at a time. Yeah, I'm taking steps at a time. Sure. So my next goal is like the pro show. That's all I'm focused on. And then when I was leading up to these shows, my goal was only the first show. Yeah. And then as soon as I won that, I'm like, all right, my goal is now the next show. Yeah. And then once I played second in that, got my card, I'm like, all right, now my next goal is the pro show. Okay. I'm not even thinking about that's good, Olympia bro. yet. That's a, good like, way to, that's a good way to do it. That's like down the line, but it just goes to show how high up the physiques are in the Olympia because you got amateur show, then you got pro qualifier, then you got pro show. These guys are all fucking big. Then you have the random win dude that. that shows up randomly, you know, on his first one, he kind of like climbs out of nowhere, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And then you got to win that pro show and then – you can still place last at the Olympia. Like, that's, it puts it into perspective. Like, the top five at the Olympia are just so fucking out of everyone's league that it's like, if I focus on that, it's it's not going to do me any good because it's just going to demotivate me. It's yeah. like, well, that's so fucking far away. But that's not, you can't think about it like that or you'll just never fucking put an effort because, like, what's the point? Yeah. But, um... That's, that's fucking deep. That's, that's great. Yeah, that's no, a, no. A, when you said, great. when you said, when you think about, like, the top level, like, the top five, like... Mm -hmm. You think about that, it demotivates you. That kind yeah, of, I mean, that's literally just like focus on yourself. Like, literally just focus yeah. on yourself. If I look at these guys like R R Ramon Dino, Dino, yeah, yeah. It's good. It's I just good. look at him and I'm like, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't think about it, bro. Start, don't think about it. Yeah, as, soon about it. <laughs> as soon as I start, as soon as I look at him and start to think about the fact that I would have to compete with someone that looks like that, it it's demotivating. It, yeah. So all I can do is follow him and look at him for motivation and look at him in terms of admiring his physique, yeah. no homo, but I can't look at him in the sense of I'm going to have to compete yeah. against that and, and at some point. Or for, Chris Bumstead, like what? Yeah. And, and for, <laughs> but for me, it's like, why do I compete if I really don't give a fuck about like climbing the ladder? It's like literally, because if I don't show up more diced, fucking bigger, and just like overall, if I don't look different every time I verbally say I'm doing summer shredding, then I fucking lose. Yeah. I mean, and something I, you just that can't lose a bet. You know, it's like if you say you can't show up, you can't fucking take it to a subpar level. <laughs> yeah. You I know? mean, it's like it is definitely a, a rabbit hole because something that Ian Valier, you know, him mm -hmm. said was that someone asked him a question and said, What do you think about James English getting his pro card? Because there was some controversy, like I didn't deserve I, it, or whatever. I, I, I saw that shit. And that. Ian said, He was like, I don't really care. It doesn't, getting a pro card is fine, but it doesn't matter. What you do with a pro card is what matters. Exactly. So then it's like, well, fuck. Like, now nah, I guess I got to go fucking win a pro show yeah. then. Yeah. And then it's like, well, winning a pro show doesn't matter. It matters what you do with that. If you got to go to the Olympia or not. Yeah. Then and it's then like, building a career, well, placing so top five at the Olympia doesn't matter. It matters. You got to win. Yeah. You know, what's Mr. Olympia doing? Starting businesses and shit to set himself up for life. Exactly. Right. And that's the thing about Chris is like, that's, you know, I won't say that's the majority of the motivation because yeah. I am very competitive. I just like, I like winning, but a big part of the motivation is like Chris is fucking making bank because of yep. the name that he's built, yep. which is ultimately because of being first at the Olympia. I don't yep. think with all due respect, I don't think Chris would be nearly where he's at if he consistently plays second at the Olympia. I think it's because he is top dog yep. that like he's been able to just, I mean, he's a fucking celebrity at this point. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I just, I, I'll like at a certain, like, I guess, like when you look at these YouTubers, like, say, I know, like, you know, whatever between Bradley Martin, but that's just making fucking bank, bro. Let me tell you. Oh, no, I know. So, and it's, I'm like, not, I'm not saying there's no right, other career paths. You know, you know what I mean? I'm like, just saying, like, be even, yeah, that's a route. Even top five, dude, Ramon Dino went from, I think when I saw him, as soon as the Olympia happened, yeah. I'm like, who plays fifth? Who's this guy? Went and clicked on his page. I think he had 100,000 followers. Yeah. Now he's at like one point. Two million, mm -hmm. and he gained the majority of that. Like right after the Olympia, dude, he jumped from like a hundred thousand subs or a hundred thousand followers to like a million yep. in like a month. Yep. It was fucking That's nuts. Insane. And he went from I'm getting sure like he, he made a lot of fucking but, money. But yeah, and I'm, but I think that sure? I, he was getting the amount of likes on his pic per picture as I'm getting right now before the Olympia, and now it's like a hundred k. It's just you like don't, you don't think fucking, so? So because what if I told you our top three selling female athlete? Right, we have we have literally people well, I, have millions. I know that I know firsthand that followers do not exactly. equal equal money. Seventeen k on yes. Instagram, hundreds of thousands. Of I, I I believe that. Because I believe that. And her YouTube is fucking deep. Goes into de and, and like so that what you do in that time where you, when you game those people in that process in that time frame, that's your moment to fucking like share as much as you can, share as many tips, like be as transparent, like provide some value. Oh, one hundred percent. That's you why do that you'll have a big following with nothing. Well, that's why I'm waiting like. I'm waiting to do a full cycle reveal because I know that Derek wants to make a video on it. So I haven't like revealed it yet, but 100% like 
my core followers are always going to be the most important to me because I know they're the ones who truly fuck with me. Yeah. That's why I started a third Instagram account. I won't even say the name, but I made it private and you either know about it or you don't. And it's like, I'm probably not accepting any new people in it because I know the people that follow that account are like my core, core followers. So they're always going to be at the center of my attention. But for example, I don't think that Chris owns 50% of Raw Revive now. A, f a company that was already fully established on its own, all the work had been done, and he just comes in and he's like, give me 50%. <laughs> like, the yeah. power to do the that to do it. comes from that kind of... Now, there's more that goes into it because Chris has the look. He's got the fucking mustache. He's got the lisp that makes him endearing. Like, there's and, a bunch and, of aspects and, to go into it, uh, but underneath all, ultimately... He's a good ass dude. Exactly. I'm but, saying there's personality, there's the look, there's like... People like him. He's a very likable person. But ultimately, like, let's be honest, the the big fucking selling point is like, this dude looks like a god. He's fucking first at the Olympia yeah. for classic physique. And honestly, looking like a god is not big Grammy. No offense. But like, no, no. People watch that because they're amazed, but they don't want to look like that. But with Chris Bumstead, people are like, damn, that dude looks fucking good. Like, I want to look like that. And then he gives that. you tips on his YouTube channel. Holy shit. Yeah. And, you know, he's... He's even open about his gear now. He uploaded a video the other day. It was like his off-season cycle. So he's number like, one, man. He's number, and he's a prime example, like taking that, like the the true, you know, almost like going to the max, being number one. Like that's a yeah. He's a one of one, bro. Yeah, like, he's insane. And like his whole mentality leading into it, and his uh, even even his Olympia speech. I don't get inspired much, but that inspired me when he was saying he was three weeks out and he was like crying yeah. to Courtney because he's like, I don't think I can do it this year. And then she, like, got him through it, and then he fucking finished it out and won. Like, that's why people fuck with him. But I agree with both of you guys that followers does not equal code usages or sales or whatever, but there's a clear correlation. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a one-to-one, -one, but someone that has two followers is not going to be making more sales than someone that has 10 million followers. 100%. So it's opportunity. It, there's opportunity it's and it's not just like in said, terms it's just of what you do with it. Yeah. It's not just in terms of code usages. It's also just in terms of how many eyes are on you mm -hmm. and a company is going to be willing to pay you a hundred K a month to wear their shit. They don't really care about how many sales you make. It's more about how many eyes you bring to the brand. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And that, that, that's, that's a hundred, a hundred percent correct. Mm -hmm. But after a certain time, if you're not really showing any sort of, you, you know what I mean? If you don't show any effort and you're not really making any sale, but I think I think Chris is doing all right with He's, like oh, young yeah. LA. <laughs> I, I I think I he can throw up anything and and, and absolutely just, and that's just like a, such a rare occurrence, man. Yeah, like, I like it. I honestly I disagree. I think that he I I'm sure he's doing fine. Well, I know he's doing fine, but I think that he he if he applied himself fifty percent more than what he's doing, he could. 2x 100% agree his, but his passion's over here yeah i 100% agree with brandon you know I mean? so it, yeah, yeah no, 100 i agree too i think specifically a, talking shoots. about young okay, la so yeah, yeah i don't think i don't think this is not to give advice to chris but i don't think chris realizes exactly how high his potential is in terms of income with young la i think that he I just think he fucks with the clothes and he's like, yeah, I'll wear these. Like, I'll throw up a story once right. in a while. He's, I don't think he realizes he's like, yo, the, you could be the making check he gets from bank. one little post, but he, but he's yeah, focusing exactly. on other things. Exactly. He's focusing on his 80,000 yeah. shirts he's selling on his ring. Right. You he's not going to be there doing like, yo, so this is the fucking next shirt uh, that yeah. I'm wearing on his store, you know, because he's focusing on like Raw Revive and his next show. But I still don't think a lot of the big names that are signed to Young LA and Gorilla are the two ones that come to mind. I think they see it as another sponsorship. I'm not saying they don't fuck with the products. I'm sure Chris loves the products, but I think they just see it as like another sponsorship. Yeah. Like, oh, I've had a million of these. I don't think with these specific brands, they realize just exactly how much potential there is in terms of income because it's changed me and Sushi's lives. Like, so what I, I wanted to ask, I don't know if you guys are doing it now. Does Alfleet have, like the athletes, do they have discount codes? Yeah. It's but now, that's, it, but that's, that's recently. Happened, what's yeah. the what, what's it, it the about three X? So three X from a support code to a discount. So where we, the customer just type in the name at checkout, mm -hmm. and that would pay ten percent out. Now that the customer gets ten percent, it's it's doing about two and a half to three X what a support code would do, right? So we're paying out. I mean, what was the what was the question? Why well, I was just gonna ask why did you wait so long? Because I know for a while you guys we don't didn't have, have the margin codes. Straight up. Uh, okay, so like, you just can pay them out. Yeah, I know that pay, with you. Expensive, bro. Like, I was gonna say, like <laughs> I know you're. Something you toured me around. I uploaded it. I think it's called Alpha Land Tour. Um, fucking awesome facility, by the way. Like all upstairs, I'd never seen it before. Was way more 
complete than I thought it would be. I thought it would kind of be like in the works, but it's like pretty fucking sick. The room that you showed me with the anechoic chamber in it, where your editor edits his videos, mm -hmm. have you been in there? It's really it weird. It's I completely no coated in oh, these. Oh, no, I haven't. It's co the entire room is coated in these foam spikes. It's just a bunch of foam spikes. Like no and sound. you can. It's almost like you can make a song in there. No, it's almost disorienting because when you talk in there, even talking in here right now, you're so used to hearing your voice reverberate off walls. But when you go in there, there's absolutely no reverb. So it almost sounds like you're in space, like you're in outer space because there's no sound coming back in. And I had to leave the room after like 30 seconds because I was like, dude, I don't fucking like it in here. Yeah. Like, it's like so hear your quiet. own thoughts. You yeah, hear, bro. Can, it's can, so the quiet. The only way I can work is in a space like that or with my really? Music. Yeah, in the dark. Noise if I was editing, much. yeah, but I couldn't like, I couldn't have a conversation with someone in there. It would, it would like make me nauseous. But um, something I noticed, you showed me like a bunch of the new samples is they're very high quality. Bro, like, and I, I, with Vical, I'm just thinking like, dude, how much, how much does this shit cost? Bro, our, our hoodies and shit cost anywhere from 18 to 24 bucks. Landed. Yeah, that's fucked. And our leggings are almost 20 bucks. It's like 20 bucks. You have a $72 legging to say 10%. You're 64, right? Then you pay 10% out to the athlete. Damn, okay. Now Shipping. You're 58. Now you have a, that's still decent margin. But hey, we have a whole fucking company of expenses. We have $10 million in payroll. God damn. And shipping's going up recently too. And Sh shipping is a shipping big. Over 150, <laughs> right? So then you eat an eight, nine, $10 shipping cost as well. Take that uh -huh. off. So it's just like. No, no, no. But I'm saying for you to ship the clothes yeah, yeah. to the US oh, yeah. is like, dude, for me, I know it was like. 30% of the fucking bulk order that we did was shipping. I was like, holy shit. If, if, I, if I had to a hoodie, it'd be an extra six bucks on top of the number I just said. Yeah. And it's just like, and, and that just means getting more ahead so you can put things on C, which means paying full many, 100% of the cost and shit, like way sooner, worse cash flow positions and shit. So it's, it's just like having, it's a different model. Supplements are easy to have codes because you have the margin. Mm -hmm. and, and it's almost standardized of like a pre workout's going to be 40 to 50 bucks, you know, period. And, and it, you'll never sort of see like, with clothing, back when I started, I mean, I was trying to make $28, $26, $28 t-shirts that now those pieces that are evolving and getting better, I really try to keep pricing like where it was years ago and shit. And so it's like the products we're putting out at 50 bucks, I guarantee you are better than every other product at 50 bucks. And I truly believe that. Maybe it's not, but I truly believe. It. And, and, I, and I do everything I can to do that. Yeah. But, and it's, but it's like, we just don't have, we haven't had that and we, we still don't have that margin to do, but it was more of a brand play. I mean, it was, the, it was, it was the, you guys was were the, the only deep. ones and Jim Shark. I don't, I don't know what, do they do it yet? Or I don't know. I think they used to, they did the link, back, they, they did, the, they did the link, but it didn't even have a discount code. So there wasn't with you guys, you did a code with no discount, correct. which we, is, we pay higher set retainers and shit. Right. Way. Which is nice. Like at least people can type in a code. You can still promote your code Yeah. with Jim Shark. The thing that I didn't really like was that they didn't even have a code. It was a support link. Yeah. So someone would have to fuck with you so much that they went to the link in your bio and clicked on your support link to shop from. Most people just didn't want to deal with that. So it ended up being not, not very ideal. Um, but what I was going to say, at least with the samples you showed me, because I haven't seen like the standard pieces you have, but with the new stuff coming out, was the attention to detail was like... I'm a fucking Nazi, bro. Blew me away. Yeah. In terms of like the very like minor, something would be outlined and it would have like a half millimeter outline on it. And I'm like, who the fuck thought of this? Yeah. And the the quality of it, I just feel like, I, 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 I feel like manufacturing, like getting my own stuff done and dealing with like, bro, this is not the quality I thought it was going to be. Every order made me appreciate shoot. that quality more because I was like, dude, this is like. Every order takes between 12 to 18 months to come from when I get the money and say, here's, here's, that's uh, here's 30, fucked. 40%. Right to get it going, yeah. It will literally to get to if I'm doing something by C, eighteen months. Swear to God, but all the sampling is just to get it proper. If it's a restock, which we don't really do restocks, it's yeah. going to be at least nine to twelve months. See, yeah. that's the problem. Is like because like a lot of people but look these at these teas quick. Yeah, so yeah. comboing the quicker grab, shit like, with the sustainable pieces that'll make your like Amplify will make the brand forever. Right, mm -hmm. like a piece, having a few pieces where you really truly like try to make something unique and a product that'll like stand out from the Lulu and all the options. Yeah. Like comboing that with quicker pieces, like what we're trying to kind of move into to just be able to have a combination of faster, you know, return and shit like that while still creating pieces that'll you know, be timeless or whatever. See the problem with, with young LA, what they had is, is these orders, like you said, like six, eight months in advance and they had no idea that it was just going to be like an exponential growth. Yeah. 
So people are upset that shit's selling out in under 15 minutes. And it's like these orders were placed a year ago. Yeah. And so they have no idea. They had no idea that, that it was going to be, you know, fucking this, this like exponential. So there's so much demand and not enough supply because it was a year ago. Yep. And that was the problem that people were running into. Yeah. And that's going to always be a problem. Mm-hmm. You're making bets every time you make an order. Yeah. Every color. Because you, you have no idea. You no, have no idea. And we're, we're, we're 60, 62 percent women driven now and it's like i'm not a fucking chick bro yeah I'm, so i'm literally and like trend like trends like, change like next bro next year it could be like plaid like yep. plaid colors are in you know and so you have no idea what's going to be popping in a year from now yep 100 percent. and that's the scary part of, of the and that's the, the the draining part I'll, i would go and redo something 10 times and so but i don't there's no definite answer mm-hmm. when making these orders and shit mm-hmm. so I'll, I'll literally just fuck with shit over and over and almost i don't even know if i make it better you know, just because I would kind of get back in my head and shit, but that is, that's the most challenging part of my job. How many samples would you say on average per piece before you are happy with the way that it looks? Four to, I would say four to like eight or nine, depending <sighs> on what it is. And each one, at least four to six weeks in between. Really, that's really. fucked. That's yeah. why it takes so long, bro. Yeah. Jeez. All right. So um, we had another question here. A lot of the questions that we had on here, we actually already naturally covered. Um, but we said Christian's so busy with business ventures slash working all the time. Does he have plans of retirement or taking time off? I, time off. I just took 18 days off, but I mean, still worked. Everything but it's still day. on. Yeah, it's exactly. Still on. Cause it's yeah. all virtual. Yeah. It's it, but, on your phone. I will say when I'm 50, 45, 50, I have a goal. I, I wanted to start a gym when I was a kid to do like a training. It was just like I did OSP Monday, Wednesday, Friday, three o'clock class where you have like 20, 25 kids and you know, stations, you have the strength. You have the agility and then like the whatever, like the bodybuilding type of shit. I want to be running those classes, maybe two, three a day, just because like that's what I like doing, always wanted to do. I've never trained a client one on one or like or in a group. And I, I feel like that would that'd be another like kind of like rewarding kind of feel. So I do want to that, that's my retirement plan. Okay. Know. Yeah. So but still be making fucking bank. What's with just your, whatever else is already established. For me, the the thing that not really keeps me going, but something that's kind of like a goal is to make enough money where um, I can give back to my parents like the way they've given back to me. But I know my parents aren't going to be around forever. And what I'm kind of wondering is like, what is going to keep me waking up in the morning and keep going once my parents are gone? And I'm wondering for you, what is the current thing that keeps you going and, and keeps you like grinding as hard as you do, My basically followers. harder than anyone you know. Your followers, hundred percent. Yeah, the follower just and it, like just it sounds when you meet people and shit. It's it, it kind of you know you go through the mo you end up going through motions at times, right? And, and it can feel like that, especially like when you're meeting, you're in a line for fucking four or five hours. But almost like when you when you really th- like that is the reason why it's because I know people do watch me for in some yeah, and they count on you. They count, they count on, on you. you. Mm-hmm. It's like you can't let them down. Yeah, fuck. Like I don't want yeah. them down. You know. That's all. So that might keep you going with like YouTube, meeting people, keeping like Alphaland alive, et cetera. But in terms of like expanding your business into selling to people that have never even heard your fucking name. That's a good question. What, what keeps you going for that? That's a good. And that's almost like, what is the goal for Alphaland? Is it to be, to sell and be a full multi-billion dollar? And that's not the goal. The goal is to keep it bigger than it is now, but at a level where the quality and should still getting checked to the level I want it to be. I still want to be selling out of, you know, units and kind of have that. I don't want to be Nike, right? Yeah. I want to keep it more exclusive. Okay. And, yeah. And, under control. and I can see that. Yeah. But what, and I don't, you might not even have an answer for this because I feel like we don't, we don't always have an answer for like why we keep going, but I'm just curious what, what, like why, why do you essentially keep going towards that? I think, it's addicting. I get restless, bro. Like, yeah, like I, I mean, con- if I if I finish something, what the fuck is next? I'm like, like literally, mm-hmm. the minute I'm done, I'm like, all right, we're, what are we doing now? Yeah, just, it, be, because it's a, it's addicting. It's I feel like you're naturally like very ambitious, so you just you're always like you're you workaholic. You're, wired you're a workaholic. You're just that's the type of person you are. You're always on the next thing. So yeah. do you think that do you think that if you did take retirement or time off or whatever, and just said, you know what, I've made enough money, I'll sell this company, whatever, do you think you would just go fucking crazy? I would definitely, I would, I would start at something. If I went and moved to the Cayman Start Islands, a seltzer company, bro, I would, probably. I, would, I would fucking do that. Yeah. <laughs> I do some shit that would just like occupy my time. You yeah, could, that move, I would you could move to Madagascar and you'd start a fucking company I, there. I, I want to live in the, I want to spend half my year in the Caymans, 100%. That's like, my goal is to buy one of the, the property that we were at, 6.8 mil. 
mm-hmm. right? just for one little apartment on the beach. Holy shit. Yeah. And, and it was, you rented out bro, to- four years ago, 3.4. Yeah. In four years, it's gone to six. And it's not selling at 6.8, but it's that's what they're asking right now. Uh-huh. And it's fucking Wait like, like six months and yeah, probably you jump on it. Go in on that one? Yeah, jump, yeah, yeah. No, I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and, and just because I, I enjoy being there, but I would, yeah, I'd just be restless, bro. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm, I'm, you know, you said you had your parents. I mean, I do want kids one day, you know, and, and I do want to, you know, I want to have my family and shit like that. And I want to, on top of, you know, I don't think my supporters can rely on I me. Mean, I don't want to be holding that forever. Like, that's my responsibility. Like, when I'm 55, I'm probably going to give too many fucks. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's like kind of at least providing a platform for the next generation to be kind of continuing, like, some of those principles. That's the exciting part. You know? and, and, yeah, I mean, I do want to be able to chill and, you know, not have to stress. It's more so not stress about money. And I think if you can hit 10 million in your bank in, in, a, in a set aside account, 10 million put away, as long as that fucking, like, that's a number that I think is with interest and shit. I agree. That is a, that's a perfect number to shoot for that you don't fucking touch. You let that work. You can live off and, and, and do your shit and, and not have to stress. But it, for me, like, until I get to that goal where I'm literally just kind of put away and, you know, not like dream, I fucking get to take all these risks and shit. Like, mm-hmm. that'll be like a nice safety blanket, but I don't think I'll ever stop. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's not I feel so much like a money you, game. you said like some of the only times you ever feel emotion is seeing that like when the drop happens or seeing all those people pull up or whatever it is, and Heidi too. Well, it's, it's never know, like an athlete launch. I don't even check the fucking numbers, bro. I'm like, it's never the the, the drop. It's always like the the people, right? That's yeah, the, yeah, that's yeah. The, that's the part that hits. But I feel like I feel like because that's so like cathartic to you, that's part of what keep keeps you going too. Better. Because like you're chasing that feeling. Yeah. 100 percent yeah with with me and like young la because i have no i'm no more than like an athlete so i have no like i'm not in it you know i don't own any part of it with me with seeing that is like, making more money than the owner, i'll tell you that <laughs> so when so the like from the beginning because i was with them in like the very beginning well not the very beginning but they were pretty small and so now that i've seen it grow so much now that's like the point where i'm at where i don't really like bro. i don't really care we t- we won't talk about that right now but <laughs> Now to the point where I just want to see it like do well yeah. because that's like that's what I've seen for the past two years and it's like I almost don't want to stop even though I'm not even like sure my numbers have gone up since I've started yeah. but it's not that I have any um, like actual pull in the company it's just I I I put so much effort into it and like how you have with Alpha with, Go- with Ghost is a good example of that because with Ghost bro like I mean bro, like, just like the, it was a great like, started with them in 2015 before they even launched ghost as a company yeah and it's like being like the kind of the first athlete kind of kind of building with that helping build the team out and shit kind of like being a you know, getting offered equity and just kind of come in but i always said no because i like the freedom of in the quicker like athlete perspective like kind of concept of yeah it. and just let me do that but here's the deal down the line like in 10 years 15 whatever whenever that time comes i want to have those doors to be able to do something something new something fresh Mm-hmm. Right. And like, and like, and that's where like, you know, even with you, with, with you th- shit like that, where I don't know if you've opened or talked about that or anything, but like, I think, the, my- yeah, yeah, my bad. Uh, the potential possibilities that you create with so, you know, with the brand that you've kind of built that relationship with like young LA. Right. And like you create those relationships and friendships that will kind of open business partnership, mm-hmm. potential opportunities that that's where, that's where like being loyal and kind of like having that core will pay off. Yeah. It's almost like if you don't even want to be, that tapped in because you want to keep that friendship exactly. because if you get yeah. too much, it's then it, it's like your business, you your partners it, it, and yeah. shit and it, and it gets fucked up. You yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yep. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel with gorilla because I've been, I wasn't the first athlete either, but I was uh, the first paid athlete, I think. And that was back in like early 2020. He uh, just started in 2020. No, they'd been around since, I think they'd been around since 2018, but I'm pretty sure. It wasn't until Mo- he blew like, up on YouTube. Yeah, Mode, I'm pretty sure, only started at the end of 2019, which is their flagship product, because I remember Derek DMing me and being like, yo, I'd like to send you some flavors. Or I'd like to send you some Mode. We only have one flavor right now. I want you to try it out. And that was back late 2019. And then I ended up joining with them a few months later. So that's crazy. That's kind of how I feel. Like I kind of I kind of annoy Derek in a way. Not annoy him, but I'm kind of like on his ass about stuff. In the same way that I am about Vical, because I'm like, this this matters to me more than you because, realize. Because you've you repped know? it, you've repped them for name, for however yeah. long, yeah. right? It's yeah. it's like your like, almost your whole career. It's like you have you want it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It would suck to see them, 
you know, fall because then it's like it's part of me. It's a it's reflection of you. Yeah, and like they're, I like I care a lot. So I'm never like mean to Derek, but I'm I'm like pretty assertive. I'm like, yo, here's what you need to do. Blah 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 blah. Get this shit done. You can't wait any longer. And he knows it. After but the, he's got the Derek's got protein finally launched. It was like RTD with ghosts. All this time building the hyphen shit, like just waiting for it, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Ryan, why the fuck are there clumps at the bottom? God damn it. So they're redoing for him. And, and like, but yeah. you have to be, man. You have to be honest. And the, uh, any owner will, needs to respect it. Like, they should respect it. And, and like, he does. Immediately, like, you know what I mean? He, I, he definitely I, does. I, I tried this shit in the Caymans. It was in the Cayman Islands. I was like, what the fuck? And I, I sent him a picture. Love the formula. I think it's a great fucking product. It goes down smooth as shit. You had, the, you had this the, in, in... So there's a, a, a guy there, like, ships it in. And he, like, buys, like, I don't know, 20 of them. And he, like, kind of sell them almost, like, low-key. No, right? this brought it right here. This brought it right there. In the Cayman Islands. I swear to God. Holy shit, that's and, sick and, as fuck. And, and so, so he's just reselling I, pre workouts. I, I, I sent him a picture to Derek, and I sent him a picture of me with the thing. He sent me a picture with his athlete shirt he just got in the mail. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, that's that's insane. insane. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, it, it, yeah, I mean. It's just Derek is like, I feel like we didn't, we've gotten into the ins and outs of your business a little more than with Derek. Because I, I feel like with Derek, story, yeah. it was, when we did the pod with him, it was a lot about like his upbringing, where he started, and blah, blah, blah. But he has so much on his plate. Even since we did the podcast, there's even more now. There is so much on his plate that, like, yeah. I don't know how the it's fuck hard. he manages it's it hard all, for him to. It's hard for him to focus on. You have to prioritize. Mm-hmm. Like, big three, bro. Every day, what are the three things? I'm just do? so curious, like, what his days look like. Yeah. I'm like, what can you possibly be doing right now? Yeah. Like, there's just so much different shit. I don't know. Is it all, like, meetings? Like, what is it? For me, man, like, 90, it's probably, honestly, with him, it's probably... Supplements only is manufacturing. I would say it's more so like planning out. I don't know. It's a different. It's, game. I'd be, it's I'd be hard so to market, bro. It's hard to For market. Me it's making clothes. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, but yeah. but see, the thing is with clothes, it's easy to market. Sunglasses, easy to market. But, but like this, this shit, it's like yeah. How like how good can the? He's holding up a, a tub of gorilla. Right, like how how good can this marketing be? Like how what can I do with this photo or like me holding it like this? Yeah. It's so hard. Yeah, and you that's know, why I think clothes. It's so easy. Twenty percent commission. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, th- I think that's why Gorilla did so well and continues to do so well is because Derek, like the marketing for Gorilla is pretty bad. Let's be honest. Like if you take a look at the social media page, this is but something they have the that right people. Derek knows he needs to work on. Everyone at Gorilla knows they need to work on. It's not like take a look at the difference between the marketing on the Young LA page or Alpha Lee page yeah. versus Gorilla. That's not what sticks out about the company. It's that Derek cares enough to make these, all, formulas. Uh, all the formulas are made on his own and fucking hundreds of hours of research go into each one. And then he cares enough to sit down and make like an hour long product breakdown and be like, look, you know, I know our marketing isn't the best, but here's why this is the best fucking that's what makes pre-workout. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, because of that too, I know how much has gone into this and I'm like, all right, I'm invested. And I've said on the podcast before, I'm not fucking leaving Gorilla unless it goes bankrupt. So, like, I'm invested, which means now I care fucking a lot about this. Yep. So, yeah. It's with, a good way to be, man. With 3D, did you start it? Yes. So, I wanted to make, I drink White Monsters fucking up the ass, right? Like, every day, all mm-hmm. day. Like, one, two a day, guaranteed. Mm-hmm. And That's uh, like the zero cow right? Take a the break. Okay. Get some yeah, sleep. Right? <laughs> but, man, like, and for me, it was, everyone bring me White Monsters, you know, 24 packs at expos and shit, like. Mounds that was like your thing. Was oh, like, I, remember yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Mounds you started. Them. Wait, were you the? I was the white did, monster connoisseur, and you would do like the the single hand openings and shit. Was that you? Every video had a white monster. Every single. Oh, one. Would, you'd like lift it up and do the fucking every like the single. single or was that Max Tuning? I don't fucking remember. First sip, you know. Yeah, and yeah. like that kind of became the thing. And then I just wanted to make an energy drink, right? But that would be less bloating, more caffeine, and that was it. Like and minimal branding, because like, I, I I didn't like all the monsters very like intense looking right? yeah no these are really simple i i like the way 3d they're very, they're so aesthetic they're yeah. like that's the only word for it and, and that was enough to make a different you know i didn't think i could make an energy drink that'd be successful i mean but just do something a little different and if you yeah if you think it's a better product then that's all you got to do that'd i think the company. the thing that stands out the most to me it, it definitely stims me a bit but it's the flavor yeah of each one it's is ju- really good it's a juice like taste yeah and the thing that i've noticed with uh I should name names, but like C4. Mm. I like some of the C4 ones. They do like collabs with sour fucking Too Sour low. Patch Kids, but they're so fucking sweet yeah. that it's like, dude, I can't drink this. But with 3D, it's like, it, it tastes Smooth. good. Like like you were saying, you can just sip on it because mm-hmm. it tastes so good. Yeah. yeah. So, and then the branding too. I don't know. It's just like 
sometimes if, if I'm in a pinch, I don't even drink Gorilla because I'm just like, oh, I'll just take a 3D. Mm-hmm. And it stims me Convenience. out. Convenience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So do you have any advice for, like, anybody trying to – I mean, you're, like, you're very well still in the game. Like, anyone trying to just get into, like, this industry, whether or not it be YouTube or, like, just Instagram – yeah, I think like, like as a, as an influencer, as soon as you, you on TikTok, traction, do you consider yourself an influencer? I'm, I'm not, yeah. So if if you, my Instagram bio, fitness, fitness YouTuber first. Okay. Because like to me, like that's what I, I always. That's what you started. I, I started, and I want to continue mm-hmm. doing. Like if I could eliminate some shit off my plate, I'd be making YouTube videos mm-hmm. because I, I really like it, and I, I enjoy like you know the shit that I feel from that. And, and I would say like when you gain traction, whatever, just be sure you don't lose. I checked both of those channels on the way here. I was like, okay, how many, how frequent are that you guys uploading and shit? You guys are. I've been your, slacking you're recently, on your shit, bro. No, you're on your shit. I was uploading every day in June, but since then I've been vacationing. <laughs> but but and, but that's but overall, you like 150, 174 videos. Like keeping that pace up in the bigger picture, it, it like don't lose sight of what got you here. Yeah, right? and and don't right. forget to feed that organic. It's not about all the businesses. It, it's you have to give that. Whatever got you to where you're, you just don't forget to do that, and hopefully you enjoy doing that. For us, it's both YouTube. Yeah, some people would argue for sush. Oh, TikTok. I don't think so. No, it's YouTube, bro. I think I think TikTok like was a little catapult, but YouTube I think funny YouTube, ass stories that are real as fuck. Well. Just like uh-huh. you, again, that he says on YouTube yeah. is what I'm saying. Like I think that YouTube YouTube is way up here in in the in the, the yeah. value of yes um, 100%. yes hundred percent because like and I've said before. One YouTube subscriber is worth like a thousand TikTok followers. A hundred percent. Because like TikTok's so easy, you just click like it it's is. so quick, boom, boom, but YouTube's no more of a commitment. Building. YouTube's there's a commitment. It's like you're fucking going in on a Netflix series. Right. Would you yeah. watch a twenty minute video of some chick with a or whatever that went viral and you went exactly you build that time, the screen yeah. time and that kind of you know, that interest and sort of it's just a different relationship build. Because there's a million people that you know, you don't really do TikTok anymore, but back in the day, I remember there was one, you were doing cardio, you had your shirt off, and it's like, there's a million people that would watch Sush be edgy with his shirt off for 15 seconds, yeah. but how many people would watch him for like 20 minutes long? Yeah. And it's like, that's what really matters. There's a huge fucking difference between 15 second attention span versus 20 minutes, I'm fucking committed to yeah, watching this video. you guys sit down and watch that shit. Yeah. yeah. I don't even do that that much anymore. Like yeah. watching like YouTubers that I used to watch. I, I yeah. only do it when I'm on cardio. <laughs> yeah, <it>. yeah. <laughs> I, the, the thing that I've noticed is uh, I never watched Cody Ko before. I don't know why. I just, I'd heard the name, but do I just you know Cody Ko. He's just like a he's a comedian and and he does just like he does a lot of like, like reaction like, stuff. Yeah, he like films himself reacting to videos and he's just really good at you know lining up jokes. Yeah, with yeah. yeah. I think watching. he does vlogs too. But his biggest, if you sort by most popular, all the fucking top twenty are this series he had called That's Cringe. And he'll react to like a really cringy YouTube video with his buddy. And they're very fucking funny. Like my exact type of humor. Yeah. And that was, I, I've been like binge watching the That's Cringe videos for the past three days since Gianna showed me one. And I realized like, this is the first time that I've had this like euphoric feeling watching a YouTube video where I'm like, I literally haven't felt that since I watched like Minecraft Let's Plays back when I was like twelve years oh, old. RuneScape PKing, like fucking pure RuneScape. PK, bro. I would fucking watch that <laughs> shit endlessly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. So but like <laughs> that feeling, that feeling that I had watching this new YouTuber back when I was younger was like such a good feeling. And getting that watching Cody Ko, I was like, I realized I was like, dude, I've, I've literally. Like, if Cody knew how good he was at making these videos yeah. and how addicted I was, like. I don't watch fucking like okay. anything else like that. That's how I source athlete. I, I, I won't get, I, I need to watch for you. I want to watch multiple videos through. And yeah. That's how and you if really you're hooked, you're, you're like, oh shit. Yeah. yeah. That's why you have a good one. Yeah. And that's the problem with like Instagram and TikTok is because it's so quick and it's hard to find like, like you, people that are going to be able to convert. And you may get the hundred K for a few months. Right. But if you don't, if you don't continue, like I'd rather have someone who's kind of started with that kind of, Pure following. Like, I mean, I think that's a yeah, an and I think that's why like there's YouTubers that make um they make very viral type content, but if they were to upload like a very bland day in the life, like if they just titled it day in the life with no clickbaity thumbnail, they might only pull twenty k views. And I think the thing that stands out uh about not to sound cocky, but people like mm-hmm. me and Sush and mm-hmm. you is we can kind of just like make like thumbnails and titles matter, but we can make kind of whatever thumbnail and title we want 100%. and minimum like 40 K people are going to watch it. Yeah. So, uh, and that's something I've noticed with your videos as well. It's like you one of the only me, people that I'll still watch, like I'll still watch his videos yeah. and I fucking live with them. Yeah. So it's like, 
that uh, means, means the video lot. is that means that the means video is good. It, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that can't. It, it, I don't care how good of friends I am with someone. If it, the video is shit, I'm not gonna watch and a it. Lot, it just comes down to personality. And like honestly, like how how is the person to like hang out with? You know, that's why you're fucking roommates. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, probably, yeah. you probably enjoy like just like the the dynamic of it, right? Well, it was yeah. And it everyone was has weird characters. Like some people mesh well with like like someone may you know hate my shit, but they love Charlie's shit. But they may maybe found Charlie through or whatever. But you kind of find who you like, kind of. I kind of vibe with yeah. I mean that's how you relate and like who you look up to or whatever Uh well it was it was like when we first moved in we had never met each other we'd facetimed a good bit and we texted but we'd never met each other so it's kind of like yo how's this gonna work and like the first car ride he picked me up from IH or wherever the it was or uh, no Atlanta it was Atlanta uh, whatever the fuck it's called and we're like getting used to each other but it was literally within like a day I mean dude we had to we did a road trip from Atlanta. To Houston, it was like 14 50, hours. Yeah, 15 yeah. hours. If you're not going to get along well with someone, you're going to realize it in a fucking, you're stuck in a car with them for 15 hours. And it's like, I think it was really after that road trip, I just knew there's something here. Like, this is going to work. Because there's very few people, like, I'm pretty selective, and there's very few people that I can sit in a car with for that long and still be friends with on the other side. Yeah. You know, I'm going to get sick of you after an hour if oh, I don't I like you. Uh-huh. Especially, in a, yeah, now that I think about it, like, that... That road trip or whatever, like it's only you and I, you know. There's nobody yeah, else. There's no one so else. I was like, I can only I talk to this listened, motherfucker. <laughs> well, we listened to the Alex Jones Joe Rogan podcast. Remember that? Yeah, that was funny. But um, yeah, and I think like one of the reasons that we haven't really reflected on this recently, but it was so fucking exponential. I don't know if you remember, but like we weren't really individually that like big when we first moved to Houston. But then it was like the combination of our content that just worked so well. And I think it's because we're not the fucking same person, yep. you yeah, know? Yep. And I think that's also, we, we were like so surprised that the podcast did so well. And it's kind of funny looking back on it because it's like, why would we be surprised? If we were the same person, no wonder it would have done poorly. Yep. But it's because we're different people that it's like the fucking synergy works well, you know, in a, in like a weird way. It's funny. Like, think about Alf. It, it, it's all, it, it's Max. Max is the complete opposite. He's like, wow, you have Shawley, super chill. Laid back. You have all these personalities and like yeah. using, almost not using everyone together, but it's like, that's how you create shit that fucking pops off, man. Yeah. I think that's, that was the Alpha and retail store, right? It's almost like in just allowing and supporting, like you have to understand, like you can, and then you, you support all those people. 100%. Like they got Anaka, you got ever forward, like in Alpha land, yep. even though they're, competition yeah, there is no competition it's like you just have to like and if you yeah i mean that's a perfect example of this you know what i just kind of it's the last 10 years like Alfland is the last 10 years of all those friendships being built and like documented and shit like over time you know yeah and all the personalities combined creating like this environment and shit like that so yeah yeah that's fucking good man that's fun yeah. yeah, solid. I'm pod, sweating guys. my ass off, bro. I'm like, I got so much sweat. We've got like, three fans going on in here. I mean, we've been going for what an hour and a half, two hours, two hours, ten minutes. Holy shit, bro. yeah. I was like, man, I'm, oh my <laughs> god. He's like, Fuck. dude, the last hour went by so fast. My bad, bro. I didn't you know good, we were going good. that long. You good? All right, yeah, we well, should probably we can, wrap it yeah, up. Yeah, let's wrap it up here. So, shout out to Christian for coming on yeah, here. Thank you, man. Yeah, thank it was fucking sick. You're starting your own pod soon. Yes, I'm. Th- I'm strongly considering before I announce it. Yeah, because like, it, oh shit, you know it's okay, it's okay. Like, but and I, I want, I want to. Yes, because yeah. I really enjoy doing that. Or just become third modcast host. <laughs> we get you separate, like separate yeah. camera and everything. I, I do want to do it. It's yeah. just like I said on the plate, man. Just like right now, it's sorting. Where do I put the time? We got phase two first. Phase two, bro. Well, yeah, phase two. Let's get to it. I did uh, the new layout has a pod room. You're saying? Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> I saw the the really quick the back the back side of Alfland that you were gonna do like the lounge and shit. Yeah. It looks super sick. It's, it's gonna be fucking very, very and that'll be we're covering yeah uh, next uh, pod day club on the other side. <laughs> Last yeah. else coming yeah. soon. Last else coming soon. You guys heard it here first. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys want to support us, you guys can use code Mog on Anabar, and then uh, our individual codes for Young LA and Gorilla. But once again, shout out to Christian. Also, shout out to 3D because you guys stay sending us um, drinks. And they're really fucking good. So go get you one. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and also, remember to, if you're listening oh, fuck, on yeah, Apple Music. We, yeah, we should have mentioned this at the beginning. But if you're listening on Apple Music or Spotify, um, reviews there. Like one Apple Music review is worth a thousand YouTube comments. Like just a simple For your stars. pod. Remember that. For your pod. Shit. Make 
not make them, but like make sure you like try to include yeah, people yeah, reviewing yeah. stuff. It really them. helps. It really helps. So you can listen to this on like Spotify, or Apple, and Apple Music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't have to watch it. You don't have to watch. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So just a simple five star review. I know you're gonna rate five stars because it's fucking dope. So please go throw those five stars up on Apple Music. If you want to write a comment, you can as well um, on Apple Music, and it really means a lot because it ranks us higher and shows our podcast to more people. So we're trying to push those platforms. Mm-hmm. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Christian, again, for coming out. You. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, no it's been a lot I learned of fun. a lot. I honestly did learn a lot. Appreciate and I, I, I admire your your ability. Ambition. Yeah, your ambition. And also, you're really open to talk about money, which is something that I like. Yeah, that's I, dope, bro. I like to talk about. Uh, I wish I had, you know, like, that was something I always wish I could kind of, like, hear more about in business school. It's like, I want to fucking hear the real shit. Yes. You know? Like, no, that's what, shit. that's because people would always, like, entrepreneurs that I follow or whatever, they would talk about, like, yo, I'm so rich blah, 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 I do this and that, I have real estate, but they would never talk numbers. Save for your taxes. Yep. Anytime we drink, with, we go out drinking, just, bro, I need you to fucking save your taxes. Yeah. Put it away, bro, because that yeah. shit's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's nice to actually have you open about that and uh, hearing that Alphalete's going to do 100 mil in sales this year. Congrats. Thank that's you. a yeah, that's tenth of a sick. billion. Thank you. It's a significant fraction of a billion, which is pretty fucking wild to even say, but... Good job. Thank you. And thanks for coming on. Lots of coming soon. Peace. All right. See you guys.